Hello. Oh, okay. It's it's on now. Can you guys hear me okay? Let me know if anything is wrong. Cuz who knows. Uh let's have the graphics level not at highest because that caused problems last time. We'll start at high and then let me know if anything is wrong. <laughs> Okay, I'm hoping the audio is okay. Where are we? <laughs> um... Oh, we're on the, the peak of the thing. I was like, I was just confused. Right? Am I loading it? Okay. I need to remember the controls because it's been a bit. How do I bring up the thingy? I'm failing, guys. Nope, that's zoom. Nope. <laughs> you know the little pad thingy? Oh, it's escape. There we go. Alrighty. We're doing good on our rock collection. We still are missing a couple, but that's okay. You're a minute late, UA? Unacceptable. Leave my stream now. I'm kidding. Don't do that. Stay. <laughs> um... It, 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 this game kind of looks a little creepy at nighttime. Just grayous in heels. Hello, my people. Hello, Crystal Light. Ye. And Oreos and OJ. That is an interesting combo. I personally don't like orange juice, so I wouldn't like that anyways. But I'm sure people who like orange juice and Oreos may not like that. <laughs> okay. Um, I guess we are looking for things. I bet the map is supposed to help. This map? Um, but I don't really know what these things mean. Guess we'll see. This game is mainly walking around. You guys can hear me okay, right? No one's dying? There's like ambient bug noises. There are bugs in Ozekino Kuni. Spoilers. Now, I was going to get a lot of recording done today. And I was gonna use this as like my ch treat for recording something. I finished recording one uh, video, but that was a short, so great. But um, I'm in the middle of recording uh, a video right now where I go through a bunch of the different characters and all their problems, which is basically every Hosoku no Kuni analysis video. And I finally have a headcanon for Alex's pronouns. And that video was not, about that. I'm going to make a dedicated- oh, this is cool. I'm going to make a dedicated um, pronouns video at some point. Um, just going through all the different Japanese pronouns, what each character uses. But I have to reread the whole manga in Japanese first, because I want to make sure I get it correct. Because I also want to look at the Lunarian pronouns and what they pr pronouns they use in the Japanese. Um, but I finally have a canon for why Alex uses female pronouns and, all, and none of the other characters do. I don't think there's- like, Adventure Kosis, I was looking, because I read up to volume 2 in Japanese. Adventure Kosis doesn't use uh, female pronouns either. There's a bump here. Um, even though I feel like Adventure Kosis is probably one of those female characters in the story. It, it is, basically. I, I was surprised. So, if Alex is the only one using female pronouns, there has to be a reason. That's what I kept thinking. If Every small detail in Hosoku no Kuni, there has to be a reason for it. Oh, there's gems over there. Um, yo, Foss is getting their shoes wet. What do you guys think of that? There we go, Pentacrosis. So, oh, time change. And there's gems over there. Give me. I want to collect rocks. Is that a new one? Maybe. I don't know. Uh, whoops. Can I? Okay, I can't pick that one up. What is this? Okay. 
Alrighty. Cool. What do you do in this game? Um, you walk around. Uh, it's basically like a recreation of the island in the school. Uh, what am I saying? So if you're, it's Congo Simulator, it's Congo Foss Simulator, uh, and you collect different gems. See here, there's a few that I haven't done. I think Karen Gorm is glitched, uh, whichever one Karen Gorm is. But um, yeah, you collect rocks, and then you can pick a carving spot. Basically, let's find a good carving spot. Oh, there's another one. And you collect these like memory things across the map, which show like clips from the anime. So far, I haven't been copyrighted. <laughs> Zircon needs every gem like needs more screen time, but Zircon like dies off the face of the earth at some point in the story, and just is only seen in the background. <laughs> in the Portuguese translation, Benjikos is called the Re. A king, although the female title is Reina, Reina, a queen. I don't know if I pronounced that correctly. Um, you just reminded me of something from Hunter x Hunter, completely unrelated. But um, in Japanese, they have a they have a word for queen, but they decide Ichikawa purposely decides to use the masculine version of king uh, for Ventricosis, which I is a decision. I think it's an interesting decision. They do that in Hunter x Hunter. Again, Hunter x Hunter is my favorite manga. I know that I talk about Hazuki no Kuni way more, <laughs> extremely more. I only have one video on Hunter x Hunter on my channel, but um, uh, Hunter x Hunter is my favorite manga. Don't tell Ichikawa or else she'll come for my head. But, um, <laughs> but in Hunter x Hunter, they do that too, where all the princesses, in quotes, uh, in the latest arc are actually called princes, and it's interesting. Sorry, I'm still answering the question of what you do in this game. You find a carving spot, like, you can go, like, right here, if you wanted to, trying not to fall off again. You open your menu, you pick a rock. Let's pick a rock. What did, which one have I not carved? Which one do I have a lot of enough not carved? What's this one? Oh, I've carved platinum before. Um, is this... Oh, let's carve phospholite, yeah. So you pick a place and then you can carve uh, the gems and then you can display them places in the school. Like those two red rocks behind me. Oh no, and sometimes they glitch, but it's okay. Reina, Re uh, like lasagna, Reina, yeah, Re lasagna okay so it's just like reina is what you're saying okay there's a hunter x hunter character named reina and it's kind of interesting because she shows up in an arc where um there's a queen and i was like it doesn't reina mean queen in some language anyway um but that's what i was thinking when you brought that up my, my rock is glitched. No. Anyway. Oh, I was talking about my headcanon for why Alex uses female pronouns. We're getting a little off topic, but that's okay. I actually think this is cool as is. So once you press confirm, then it'll appear over here and then you can display it somewhere. Let's see, where should we put Foss? I think these two are silver. Oh, can you put it in the box too? Oh, no, my rock. My rock is gone. No, I, I accidentally put Foss in the box. Give me back Foss. Oh, I guess maybe this is a discard. I didn't think of that. I just killed Foss, guys. Oh, well, I gave them what they wanted. Okay. Um, I didn't mean to kill Foss. Not the child. Uh, but back to my headcanon on um, why, which one was this one? Oh, this was Lapis, right? Uh, I made like a hole that looks like Mickey Mouse. Even the shadow looks like that. But my headcanon for why Alex uses female pronouns is no, yeah, no. Foss is gone. Poor Foss. I didn't mean to discard Foss like that. Sad. Oh well. Hopefully we'll get more Foss Bofalite later. Uh, 
because I would like to just play boss. I didn't mean to just kill them like that. Um, I didn't know that was the trash can. <laughs> oh. I guess let's go look for more rocks. Anyway, that's the game. And you can display the rocks on the little pedestals like I did there. Um, I think they plan on adding more stuff to it. I'm not sure. Let's forget for Foss for 2,000 years and now that they are in the, to, now that they are in the box. Don't give me back drama. Uh, okay, the fan art of Foss in the boxes scattered across the island give me so much horror. You have no idea. I once saw like a really good fan art of like Foss's, one of Foss's like pearl eye and then just little bits of like Foss full light and lapis in a box it just like scattered about and it gave me such uh visceral horror <laughs> anyway i love the second no uh fandom uh i love the amazing fan art we have here i love the commu amazing community we have um uh, why did they try to kill me <laughs> anyway I keep tr talking, saying I'll tell you what my headcanon for Alex, female opponent says, but I keep forgetting. So basically, Alex is an outsider, and I just recorded this in the video I was just doing, so that's why it's on my mind. But Alex is, Alex is actually more isolated from the gems than I thought. Again, I love how Ishikawa never overtly states any of this, but Alex is the only one who stays inside all day while all the other gems are on patrol for Lunarians, because Alex is not allowed to see Lunarians. Alex also, uh, I believe the other gems also fear Alex a bit because of their rage ha that happens when they see Lunarians. And of course, it's understandable, as we see during the invasion arc. But um, Alex probably puts on a more feminine like language, like uh, Atashi and Chan uh, in their language, because uh, maybe to be less intimidating to the gems is what I thought was part of a headcanon. That is ominous music. Um, this is a gorgeous sun, whatever is happening. But that's what I think. One of the, so I have two, two sort of headcanon things. One is that Alex wants to be less intimidating towards the gems because they are known as having like basically anger issues when they see an Illuminarian and they're being isolated in the inside of the school because they don't want them to go outside and see Illuminarian and go berserk, you know? And I guess, uh, maybe this is stated somewhere. I'd have to reread Hosek no Kuni again, but uh, maybe, I. Vaguely remember the characters being somewhat fearful towards Alex because of their condition. And if that's the case, it makes sense for them to take on a more um, cute, like, sounding uh, language in order to be less threatening to them because this is the society they want to fit in. And so by fitting in, they may ch be ch overtly changing their language in order to seem less frightening. Um, the other thing it could be is that it could just be another, <laughs> like representation of I guess like transcoded characters in Hoseki no Kuni because most of the characters either use gender neutral or male pronouns I don't know what I'm doing I'm trying to do parkour in a non-parkour game I'm just trying to jump over the rock jumping over rocks that's all this game is but um like all the other characters use gender neutral or male pronouns in Hoseki no Kuni, and most of them use male. There is some characters who use gender neutral, um, but for the most part they use male, which is Boku or Ore. Uh, gender neutral is Watashi, of course. Um, what is going on over up there? There's just a floating rock. That's Brongo right there, actually. I'm kidding. Um, or Pebble. <laughs> Pebble reveal. Uh, can we climb up this? I kind of wanted to see if I could. Is this a... No. Oh, I can jump. Oh, I can jump. So, I feel like it could be a representation of that as well. Oh, maybe I can go up here. Oh, we're finding out. Um... To me, the best part of Jose Kanukuni body horror is the detachment uh, you go, you gouge out an eye to put another in its place. It's painless. It's still gouging an eye. <laughs> yeah. Um, man, I did not expect to be able to climb up here. We'll see how far I can get. Oh, unless I fall off like a stupid idiot. 
But, um, that, for some reason, that part didn't bother me as much. That You think it would. I had more of a visual reaction when Foss bit down on a fork. <laughs> but, um, the eye thing, for some reason, didn't really affect me that much. I don't know why. Because usually, like, gore-wise, um, usually... I'm fine if it's like cutting or like decapitations or stuff like that. But usually if it's like eyes or orifices, I'm like, no, get that away from me. But um, maybe it's because we know their eyes are fake. I don't know. I didn't have as much of a problem with that. Did someone say it was a Kunukuni body horror? Yeah, that's all we're here for. What was your favorite part of the Hoseki no Kuni body horror? I was gonna- I was saying that my most visceral reaction to the body horror in Hoseki no Kuni was when- is when I see fan art of when Foss was split apart across the island in multiple boxes. Uh, I haven't seen a lot of fan art of that for obvious reasons, but, um, like, whenever I see fan art for that, where someone draw, draws, like, Foss's, like, pearl eye and then little bits of lapis and Foss in, like, a box, it, like, really gets me to like the fact that they were literally just split apart and in, into a million pieces and just in that like thought is just horrifying <laughs> so to me that's what that was like the worst body horror in the series actually uh and then crystal light was talking about how their worst like body horror moment was like you know their eye getting gouged out which for some reason didn't affect me as much i feel like it should affect me more than it did um not body horror, but the time when Foss like bit down on a fork with their teeth, that 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 made me uncomfortable. <laughs> Just because I could physically like hear it and I was like, oh no, that would hurt <laughs> but you know, that would hurt us. I'm sure Foss was fine. Um What was I saying? I keep getting lost in track. I was talking about Alex's pronouns and stuff like that. Uh, for why Alex uses female pronouns initially. Um, I kind of already said what I said. Um, that it, Alex using female pronouns in a predominantly gender neutral or male... There's a cliff there. <laughs> uh, like, sounding society is could, could be, like, another representation of, like, trans, like, coded person or something. It's also, like, affirmed by the fact that Foss is the only one who calls Alex Alexi in the official English transversion, or Alex Chan in the Japanese. Um, when all the other characters forget about it, it's a common gag that Alex has to remind them to use their preferred, like, name, I guess? And so it's very, like, one-to-one -one thing of, like, what usually, like, trans people have to go through, so it's, that's kind of interesting. I think one of my favorite parts is not really body horror, but how heavy of a scene it was when Foss lost their arms because it was done kind of on purpose. Oh yeah, that scene was, oh, that scene was so sad. That scene was really heavy. Just cause it was the act of Foss, you could see Foss's desire to do it themselves. And even though they didn't in the end, that, that kind of made it worse because they rationalized with themselves why they didn't want to hurt themselves, even though they wanted to, even though they wanted to do it in order to be better, even though they wanted to remove part, more parts of themselves because they didn't like, they don't like themselves. And then them coming to terms that they shouldn't because they, they want to not be as big of a burden of their society. And then, uh, of course, Brongo, <laughs> or Pitapat. I need to keep changing my language. His name is Pitapat. It's not Brongo. Um, but, you know, Pitapat, like, taking their arms anyway. I don't know what Pitapat was thinking then. I, it's still weird to me, like, um, Pitapat's connection with the ice blows. But yeah, like, the fact that Foss's arms were taken anyway sort of makes it worse in the fact knowing that they could have done it themselves or that the outcome didn't change, even though they chose not to harm themselves, it still happened. It's really interesting. That scene is really heavy because of that and the significance of... Foss wanting to do it and then deciding not to and then it happening anyway. Um, Foss's battle with Cinnabar, the gold alloy holding them together, the organic shape of gold platinum, of the gold, the organic shape of gold and platinum, almost like veins, is the thing that unnerved me the most. That one was 
an interesting fight. I did find that unnerving. It's also interesting that they're shaded the same in that scene, but you could still kind of tell which one was which based on how it was drawn. Ichika was a masterful at art, man. I want to make a video of doing like an art study of Ichikawa's art, but I've never done like an actual like art study before. So I was gonna have to like research what that would entail. Um, I assume maybe just copying her style and seeing like what I can add into to my own style or working it out. One thing that I probably really like about her style is that everything is more simplistic, which technically makes it easier to draw, but it also means that there's a lot of meaning to every single line in her illustrations. There isn't a single line or single detail that isn't like accounted for. I mean, I kind of showed you that with my like chair video, for those of you who watched my chair video. Just the fact that when you do see like Obsidian, who obviously sits in their chair often, like with a worn and tattered chair, shows that like the tiny little detail that they need their chair to be repaired because it's not something the gems really think about or use. It's just really interesting and I love that. Uh, my favorite scene, which is from the anime, has to be the ending theme on the episode Antar got taken. Yeah, and did you know that was Foss's VA too? Foss's Japanese VA singing that song? Makes it even worse, man. So sad. Um, Another scene that brings me nightmares, acne again. <laughs> um, I had a whole physical reaction reading that. I don't, I think my brain shut down when I read that. I was like regurgitating like Jose Kanukuni really fast because I just wanted to, and I think I was also at work when I was reading that because I was reading Jose Kanukuni at work. And I just had to scroll past that <laughs> page real quick because I was like, nope. <laughs> but uh, I was like, that, nope, thank you. <laughs> um, I think my brain just shut down and was like, the dialogue, where is the dialogue? Give me speech bubbles <laughs> um, at that moment. Um... Oh boy, shivers went down my spine just thinking about it. Oh uh, no, not the kids. Yeah, I know people joke about Steven Universe and Hoseki no Kuni because haha -ha rock people, but if, but I'm curious, if a Hoseki no Kuni gem could break and crack themselves just by mental pressure alone, like, uh, spinal? Did, like, spinal did in the movie? Oh, you're talking about Steven Universe? I... I watched the original TV show, and I have not watched the movie, and I have not watched the later TV show version. I've Actually, all of my friends who have gotten into Hoseki no Kuni, uh, except for my boyfriend, has watched uh, Steven Universe and have really loved Steven Universe. Um, so they enjoy the similar rock aspects, but... Yeah, they remind me that I probably should finish it, because, I don't know, I felt like I aged out of that show the time I dropped the original- well, I, I watched all of the original series, but I didn't watch the movie, like I said. I don't know. I, I mean, since I have- I am surrounded by people who really like Steven Universe, I'll probably give it a rewatch if they watch it with me. Where is this thing that is screaming? Bro, where are you? I can hear you. You have sparkles, but where? Where? Oh, it's green. That doesn't help. Okay. Spinal. Okay, not spinal. <laughs> oh, sorry for spoilers then. Uh, it's okay. I don't care about Steven Universe spoilers. Um, I'm assuming, yeah. I mean, it's been so long since I watched Steven Universe 2. When did it come out? I don't even remember. Did I? I think I, I watched Hoseki no Kuni the anime before Steven Universe though. Um, can't stay for the full stream. Have fun. Oh, bye Yue. That's fine. <laughs> you, anyway. Um, I was, for some reason, like, Whenever I talk about how when I'm gonna do stream things, and I do have people in my Discord who are really excited about it, they're always like, 
but I'm in a time zone where it's like 1 a.m. for me, and I'm like, I'm sorry, you don't have to watch my stream, you can sleep. Put your sleep and uh, health above my streams, please. Oh, you might have fun too. Uh, if you do come back to the Steven Universe fandom, be careful with Black Diamond. There's a. Okay. <laughs> bye bye, UA. Yep. Bye, UA. Now we can talk crap about them. I'm kidding. <laughs> Um, I, I don't know, I feel like I'd have to rewatch all of Steven Universe. What's really funny is that every single friend that I've gotten into Steven Universe, Lapis has been their favorite character, and it's just, it's just really funny just with how Lapis is in Jose Kido Kido because they're like, oh, I can't wait to see Lapis, and you just smile, like, oh, yeah, 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 Lapis and Jose Kido Kido, have fun there. <laughs> But yeah. I also only got into Steven Universe because um, of the songs. Because I just kept hearing the songs, like, a lot. Because people would use them for things. And I'm like, these songs are really good. And that's what made me watch the series. Um, yeah. I that <laughs> Yue, you're supposed to be gone! <laughs> okay, bye bye for real now. Bye Yue, we're not gonna top crack about you, don't worry. Um, hello, Uni Dragon. I'm just running around the island. Um, let's see. What other things can I talk about, Hoseki no Kuni wise? Um, I. Oh wait, I can't wait to see Lapis. Me seeing Lapis. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's so funny. Uh, Lapis technically gets like a lot of screen time. Probably Fa Lapis gets more screen time than Foss actually. Like, technically, because um, Foss has Lapis's head longer than Foss has their own head. Like, let that sink in for a bit. But that means that Lapis technically has more screen time than Foss. Probably the most screen time of any character. Um, so yes, enjoy Lapis and Hoseki no Kuni. They get so much screen time. Smile. <laughs> Lapis is fun. Do you guys think that Lapis was sprayed away? I'm pretty sure they did. Um, cause that's been like a debate. Cause everyone keeps coping that Lapis will come back. I'm like, no, Lapis is gone. <laughs> they were gone forever ago. Oh, not Black Diamond. I didn't know there was a Black Diamond in Steven Universe, but I guess that's cause I haven't watched, uh, it in forever. And also did not watch all of it. Lapis really got ahead of all the other characters. Yep, yep, yep. Definitely, definitely did. I'm not finding new stuff. Um, I did find a few gems. Um, in my interpretation of Lapis is that just like how Foss is like a core piece of themselves, I'm pretty sure all the other characters have something like that. Um, and of course all the gems were turned into Lunarians, but I bet Lapis's like core piece of themselves is somewhere in the universe, you know? Um, and that when Foss prayed, that, like, core piece also got prayed with them. That's my interpretation of what actually happened to Lapis. Well, Lapis will come back. Sure, Grandma. <laughs> oh, you, you redacted your message. Okay. But, I don't know. I'm not one of those coping people who are like, Lapis will come back. But I also don't care about Lapis as much as some of the fandom does. Um... I do think Lapis is a really interesting character, though. I just find it interesting what little screen time they have with the amount of effects that they have in the story. It's really, really great. There's not a Black Diamond. She's just a popular fan character. One version that is completely satirical. Oh, okay. I was like, did I miss something in Steven Universe? Um... Good question. I would love for Lapis to come back, but nope, never. I mean, at this point, Lapis coming back is not happening for those of you who have read 106. Like, I don't know what, what are these people coping, man. Um, I wanna carve something, what's this one? Heliodor, let's carve Heliodor. I can't believe I accidentally threw away Foss at the beginning of the stream. <laughs> 
for those of you who weren't here, because there's more of you now, but um, I was carving my one and only phospholite uh, piece, and I was like looking at things, and then I, I didn't know that one of the things was like a bin to like throw away like the gems that you had, and so I accidentally threw Foss away, and I was so sad. <laughs> uh, anyway, I've now he I now have Heliodor. Uh, yeah, I, I accidentally threw Foss away. <laughs> I didn't mean to. I was wondering what happens if you have were holding a gem and clicked on the little box next to where the like carvings go, and then Foss was gone, and I couldn't get Foss back, and I was really sad. But it's fine now. Foss really went to the moon then, yeah. Um, no, 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 I put Foss in the box and then put them around the island. That's what one of the people in the chat said. <laughs> like a troll, and then I had trauma flashbacks. Um, you really just went full board and threw our baby away, huh? Apparently. I'm so sorry, Foss. It just made it worse than it was Foss, too. I could have been carving any other gem. Uh... Oh. Um. Doesn't lapis mean like. I could be completely wrong. Doesn't lapis mean like pencil in Spanish? I don't know. I don't know Spanish. I just feel like that is correct, but that could be completely wrong. It, that. I don't know Spanish. What other languages do I not know? I don't know a lot of languages. Can an accurate gameplay? No! <laughs> it's true though. Accurate gameplay. Carving Foss accidentally puts Foss in the dumpster. Uh, the gems in Congo be like. Uh, yeah. I don't really know what I'm doing. I don't think my carvings are that good. I don't. I, I'm doing something for sure. Lapis done does mean pencil, pencil in Portuguese too. Yes, pencil. Okay, I'm not dying then. That's what I thought of whenever someone would say lapis with like an S. Is I was like, isn't that like pencil in Spanish? But I, I really should learn Spanish, but I don't know. I don't know where I know that from. I know that I learned that at some point, and I don't know why I know that because I've never tried to study Spanish seriously. Um, Mpitsu is pencil in. Japanese. Anyway, I have no idea how I know that lapis is pencil in Spanish, but now all of you guys know too. Um. <laughs> Canon, are you a private? Apparently. Ay ay ay. <laughs> um. Let's see. What is. I don't know. I was gonna ask you guys a question, but I don't have one in mind, I guess. What's your favorite gem that has like- or, or how, how about this? Who's your favorite Lunarian? I doubt any of you are gonna say Acmea, but like there are very few Lunarian characters, so, you know. Random, but in the past Lapis Lazuli, the rock was considered to hold souls of fallen gods and goddesses. Interesting. That is very random. I mean, technically not random. We were talking about lapis. It's on point. It's on point. Um, but yeah, that is very interesting. I'm not sure if that relates to anything in the story. Late joining, but what do you need to uh, chip away a lot of gem? But why do you need to chip away a lot of gem? Because we're playing Congo. Do you not think that I'm? Uh, mimicking humanity well with my rock carving. Um, it's just part of the game is you can carve the rock to rock. Okay, I'm done with Heliodor. So when you carve a rock, you don't put them in the trash, uh, unless it's phosphor for light apparently, sadly. Oh, this is my lapis carving by the way, for any of you who don't know. There's a glitch where there was like a hole and I made Mickey Mouse on lapis. Anyway, um, anyway, you go up here. Uh, is it here? No, it's up again. Um, 
please don't fall again. But, nope, it's down here. Completely okay. wrong. Where, where are things? Everything is so dark now. Uh, I think it's down at another one. Where are the stairs? Oh, there they are. Yes. So, don't throw- don't- Even though you click in here and it makes nice little sounds, this is the trash bin. This is where Foss went, and I'm very sad. Give me back Foss. <laughs> anyway, don't- let's not click that, and let's put Heliodor somewhere. Um, where do we want to put Heliodor? Which one was this one? I don't remember. Let's see. I like how glowy they are. It's kind of like a light. Like, actually, I could probably hold this as a light if I go places. Uh, let's go up another one. <laughs> uh, okay. I'm not the best at just walking. Oh, I haven't gotten a pad paracha yet. I did carve a rutile, and I want to put pad paracha next to next to rutile. Let's see. Where? I'll put Heliodor on this one. Nice. Let's see. Uh, I think my root tile is down here. Where is root oil? Do you guys say root heel or root tile? Because apparently both are correct. This is emerald, and this is... I don't remember which rock that was. This is root tile, I think. I could be wrong. I know I put Rutile down here, so I think that's what that one was Rutile. Um, okay, I, I asked you guys what your favorite Lunarians were. Barb. Uh, yeah, I think Barb Beta is probably my favorite Lunarian. Uh, Cicada is also like top. I don't know, because Cicada was really nice, but he was also following Acmea's exact orders, and since you guys don't like Acmea, just think about that for a little bit. Um, not gonna lie, I only remember Cicada. Yeah, that's fa that's completely fine, man. Um, I like the clothing Lunarian. Yeah, the one that uh, designed like all Karen Gorm's clothes and is mentioned in the lore book. They're pretty chill. Um, the fashion Lunarian's assistant. She was kind of cute. Oh, guys, here's one. Give me, give me anime clip. It's Shinobar. We love Cinnabar, unless you're like the two people on Earth who hate Cinnabar. Um, though Acme was pretty- ha, though Acme has a pretty design, I still hate him. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, I don't- I, everyone looks the same to me. But, um... I know people were like, uh, if Acme wasn't like an army of red flags. Anyway, um, I love how just you just default to tear tear shape when you don't have an idea of where to chip the gem. I mean, tear shape is the way to go. You know, the gems don't have tears, so I'm making them into one. It's that simple. Um, the tired scientist Barb, I think is his name. Yeah, Barbada. Um, or the Lunarian in the background doing the funny faces. Yeah. I'm making my own little Hoseki no Kuni OC. Can't wait to give them a depre them depressing, uh, you guys. Oh, can't wait to give them depression, you guys. I can't read, by the way. Um, not sure what chapter that was. Yeah, I think it, like, ten whole Hoseki no Kuni fan characters with those with their only little stories, and they're all depressed. Yep. You can't have a Hoseki no Kuni character and have them not be depressed. That's, like, illegal. That's, like, you can't do that. Mickey Mouse Lapis confirmed. Yes. We all know that, um, Lapis, uh, is Mickey Mouse. Um, this has been a fact for ages. Um, oh, so you're playing as Congo? Everything makes sense now, lol. Yeah. Or, assumably, since we're carving. That's why I threw Foss away, actually. That's what, that's how you know I'm playing as Congo. Um, no trash bin Foss. Yeah, sadly. That was a mistake. I love Foss. 
I can't imagine. I can't imagine this Risa Sensei. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I failed you. Both Rutile. Yeah, I say Rutile. I don't say Rutile. Apparently they say Rutile in the dub. Oh, I plan to watch the dub this week. I say that. Maybe I'll watch it tomorrow, even though I should probably get other stuff done tomorrow. Um, if you want to watch with me, you can uh, join my uh, server, and I'll probably do like a watch along in there. Even if no one shows up, then I'll just leave it open if someone wants to show up, and we can either make fun or compliment the dub together. I don't know, I heard the dub was good. And because I heard the dub was good, and I've listened to a few parts of it, I want to give it a try, give it a shot. I think the sub will still be better, though. Um, what is the implications of that panel with a godly appearance with the third eye attempting to hand Foss when they are holding Hongo's eye? Oh yeah, that one? I mean, the Lunarians change form when they go to Earth, right? I feel like that could maybe be like Acme as like, true form sort of thing. Because when the Lunarians are on the... Like, another thing, too, is that the Lunarians hate going to Earth because it reminds them of their past self. That's why they don't speak on Earth. That's why they physically like, can't breathe while they're on Earth. So I'm wondering if the... When the Lunarians return to Earth, I'm wondering if the form that they take on is their, like, past self, maybe. Or, like, you know, because they look more, like... Buddhist and they have like the more um I'm trying I don't know what I'm saying I also don't know a lot about Buddhism but they have like the outfit and get up and like things that are more associated with like spirits or dead people I assume uh which they are the spirits so I assume and on the moon they look more human like on the moon they uh like act completely more human they eat they do all this other stuff but they're very much more exaggerated, even though they want, they don't want to think about the fact that they're souls, probably, and spirits, and mist, and not human, I guess. And probably the forms that they take on when they go to Earth, um, probably isn't a form they want to take on, is what I'm guessing. So I'm guessing that that was sort of uh, Acme's true form, which uh, Acme is supposed to represent, like, sort of like Satan in... Buddhism, apparently. Again, I don't know much about Buddhism, but this is just what I've heard from other people. And because of that, I think the thorn that he takes on when he goes to see Foss is more of a... I wouldn't say godly figure, but you know, like a divine sort of figure, because Satan is sort of like that, I guess. I say Satan because that's more of what I know, but who, you know, Yama, Enma, his other words or names that are like the, like, person who's in charge of, like, dead souls in Buddhism, you know. Like Hades, you know, the different words for it. Um, my fave is the fashion lady and her assistant. Yeah. Ella Mayo. Uh, the part where Invasion Foss was rushing the clothing Lunarians was so funny. Oh no, yeah, that was funny. They're like, no, I can't zip it up. And Foss was like, I don't care. <laughs> Foss did not care about slaying. Shiro. Yeah, I guess Shiro also counts as a Lunarian. Shiro's cute. Um, if your OC isn't depressed, you can't sit with us during hibernation. Oof. <gasps> Off topic, but there's a character in Tensuda, the anime with the Hoseki no Kuni Easter egg, that shares a name with Cinnabar in the Japanese version, both Shinsha. Uh, Shinsha, yeah, I can't spell it. Um, yeah, I don't know much about Tensuda. So I wouldn't be able to speak much about that. But then I guess the person who made that series is a Hizuki no Kuni fan. How to speed up time, please help me. Um, what do you mean by that? <laughs> do you mean like in this game? Can you do that? I have no idea. Uh, left click interact to closely sprint to hold and release. Oh, right. Oh, okay, I can jump higher than I thought. Woo! So if I hold it, then I can jump high. If I jump like this, then I jump a little. Okay, that makes sense. So maybe I can go to places. Um, Wonderland, at Wonderland, a normal 
Who's like Nukuni? But there's gems acting like popular girls in 2000s <laughs> TV. That would be so funny. That would add so much comedy to the series that we aren't allowed to have. Hello, everyone. Hello, Ginkovi. Uh, like, why is he extending a hand? Does he? Did he? Does he want the eye? Um, I don't think he wanted the eye. I think he knew that Foss would react in a way where Foss would take it. Because Congo basically gave Foss the eye, like, saying, like, uh, wholeheartedly pray for happiness. Happiness is, like, the one thing that, like, humans mostly want. Uh, oh, again, with my theory that Congo could be in on it, I don't want to believe it, but there's just so many things that, mm, that sort of hint to it. But, like, Congo saying, like, whole wholeheartedly pray for happiness, like, happiness is a thing that like, is sort of like the core desire for humanity, right? Foss in 106 had to- spoilers for anyone who hasn't read 106 yet, but you're following me. I spoil everything, so it's your problem. Anyway, <laughs> um, but in 106, Foss talks about human desire and how- like, happiness is really the ultimate goal of Foss, um, which is, you know, human desire, like I said. But I don't think that praying for happiness uh, what Congo was saying was actually good for Foss. I think he was saying that so that Foss would become what Foss became, which is basically like the deity figure. And we see the harmfulness of things like that. No gems, sadly. Uh, we see the harmfulness of that in 106 and how they aren't happy with the way they are and they can't choose happiness uh, because of all everything that happened throughout the entire story. And so when Congo said pray for happiness, like as a gift, Foss's took that eye because it was their desire for happiness. Uh, because by Foss, because Congo attributed happiness to taking the eye, and that's why Foss took it. Um, that kind of plays into my theory that Congo was a part of the reason why Foss became that way, and Fo and he sort of guided Foss there. And I think Enma uh, or uh, Acmea. Like, going over to Foss being like, hey, give me that. With the, um, hand, you know, him just holding out his hand. Because that is what was implied there, I think, with him holding out his hand. Um, Foss is like, no, nah, I hate you. Or at least that's how I felt. Uh, I'm not giving you this. Because Foss was probably, like, uh, realizing that Acmea, this is how I interpret it. That Acmea wanted the eye, Congo's eye. Um in order to gain happiness as well, which is what Foss wants, because all of them want happiness, or aka turning to nothingness, um, is what they think happiness is. And so, it's just such a lovely representation. But I think Acnea reached out his hand as manipulation tactic, because Foss was hesitating to take the eye. Foss was hesitating to put it in. Foss did want happiness, but they didn't know if I wasn't gonna say anything, but they didn't know if Foss wanted happiness, but they didn't know if that if the that was the way that they if that was the way they wanted to gain happiness. They hesitated, you know. They hesitated to take it for whatever reason. I guess it's up to interpretation. But Apia also had to say that he had to go to Earth. He knew that Foss would get the eye and all that, but he still felt like he needed to be present for it. I guess maybe to confirm that Foss did it, but oh no, I missed it, guys! No, I missed the shiny! I missed the shiny of everything! Um, okay, well, we're gonna have to come back to this place at night. Um, but Foss... What am I saying? Um, I think Acmea may have knew that Foss would he hesitate. I think Congo did too. I, I still think that Congo was in on it. Like the way that Congo said like, Acmea like wait or something when Foss invaded. Like, does that not tell you that uh, Congo, uh, anyway, I, I wanna make a video on that. I haven't yet, I haven't recorded that yet. Um, I also don't wanna believe it. I hear gems, where is the gem? Oh, no, it's not a gem, it's a memory. But... Quartz talking. Calling Foss slow. Anyway. So... 
Congo was a huge part of that. And I feel like Congo had way more um, to do with Foss's transformation than people like to give him credit for. Now, what was I saying? We were talking about the hand thing. I keep hearing gems. It keeps distracting me. If I go off on a tangent saying I'm going to say something, well, please remind me what I'm talking about. Where's the gem? But anyway, so Congo... Sorry, I'm still looking for it. Bro, where are you? Oh. Oh no, it's not a gem, it's memory again. It's Cinnabar. Winter be like. But, anyway, so I think that it was a group effort by Congo and Acmea. When Congo, like, reached out, when Congo gave Foss the eye and basically was trying to coax Foss into taking the eye by saying, like, take my eye um, and wholeheartedly pray for happiness, you know. And Foss took it, but hesitated. Foss hesitated to put it in. And I think that's why Acmea had to come, um, just to make sure that Foss did it, I think, as a verification thing. Um, I think Acmea also wanted to, was the one who retrieved Congo. Um, and I think also to... I think also to get Foss away from Congo, too. Because not only did he prompt Foss with the hand, um, which made Foss uh, immediately, like, actually want the eye, because Foss hesitated taking the eye and putting it up as a part of themselves, but since Acmea really made it seem like he wanted it, which I don't think he did, I think he was just manipulating Foss again. Um, because Acmea did that, uh, Foss was more coerced to putting it in, and I think Acmea was just, it was basically Acmea just forcing Foss to put it in the eye and not think about it too much and not think about the ramifications of that. Um, and you know, it also got Foss away from everyone. Uh, with Foss leaving the school so that the Lunarians could come in and take pick up everyone and go to the, like, uh, like basically, like, graveyard of the gems in the top area. Because, uh, you know, when Foss came back, all of them were gone, very sad. And Congo was gone. So I think it was also part of that for them to get Foss away from the school so they rec could recover everyone. Because uh, they did say, like, all the gems get inside the school, so it made it easier to collect because all of them were just in the school. Um... But yeah, another thing is, this was a Reddit post, I think I saved it, I don't remember. Someone said that um, Foss and Foss's different colored eyes represented a something that started with a D in Buddhism, like a Durama doll or something in Buddhism, correct me if you know. And Foss, and Acmea giving Foss the pearl eye, and having Foss have one blue eye and one pearl eye, uh, symbolized uh, Foss um, symbolized incompletionness with Foss having different eyes. Because when Foss finally got Congo's eyes, they finally had two white eyes. In fact, um, the Congo's eye, I think, is covered until a Yumu uh, uncovers it. Uh, I didn't think about that until now. But a Yumu, like, physically, like, lifts it up, like, when Foss is getting the flashback of Congo. Um, and then says, like, uh, you know, then the iconic line of, like, burn the bridge and stuff. Uh, but Foss... What am I saying? Um, but it shows that when Foss's two white eyes were shown for, like, the first time, it shows that Foss... I don't have any more Foss Fofa light. I'm sad. Anyway... Let's just start with the whole... Boop. Okay. Anyway, what was I saying? So, the two eyes is like a resolve thing that Acnea did. And Foss didn't get a say in any of that. Uh, Acnea just walked right over and gave Foss a pearl eye. Um, and it wasn't complete until Foss took Congo's eye and had two white eyes that were the same. And Acmea definitely did that intentionally. And um, 
Ayumu is the one who, f- uh, f- like, uh, brushes past all the, like, gold mercury-like substance. And then we get to see Foss with both of their new eyes, showing that their resolve has been ended, basically. That they're human, and that they're the machine that Kongo wanted, and that they're- What did I just do?! No! <laughs> it's, it's not what I wanted to do. Okay, that's my ruby piece. Um, sorry. But, like, that... Sorry, let me, I, let me choose a new gem. Red barrel, yeah. So, that's basically why Foss has different eyes and stuff. Where was I going with that? I was talking about something. I was on the roll, and then that happened, and then I lost my place in what I was talking about. Oh, so, Ayumu lifts up both eyes and then says that the, to burn the bridge. And so even though the resolve is done, and that they've... Well, it shows that the resolve is done, that they've taken over Kongo's role, basically, you know? Uh, because Ayumu is basically talking to Kongo in that moment, but they're also talking to Foss, because Foss now has taken over Kongo's responsibility. And by doing that... Uh, by doing that, Congo. This is not where I need to go. I was just about to jump out the window like uh, Foss would do if, when they hate themselves. No! I accidentally. I didn't mean to do that. Okay. But, um. Um, Foss. What am I saying? Sorry. I keep, like, saying, like, serious stuff and then I, like, accidentally do something like that. So. Foss is a maniac. What am I saying? Anyway, Foss takes over Kongo's role. Ayumu says to burn the bridge. Foss takes on that responsibility. And that's what the eyes symbolize, is that Foss's transformation is complete. Because at that moment, Foss does not gain any more substances. Kongo's eye is the last thing that is taken. And Kongo's eye symbolizes uh, the last like, part that needs to be achieved, and that completes the do- someone mentioned it in the chat. The... do ruma do ruma doll like, uh, thing of completion. And that- and that shows the end of Foss's transformation, and then basically being Congo now, but like, a non-defective Congo. Um, Man, do you think that's why Congo had such pity on Foss? Is because he was also defective? Anyway, another topic. I guess I'll... Let me get back to... Nope, I missed it. Where is it? Uh, it's so hard to see things in the dark. It's still down here. I'll catch up in your comments after I find a place for these ones. Where's the ruby? I think this is the ruby. Okay. This is my tiny little ruby. Where am I gonna place it? Um. Let's place it, um, up here. With Heliodor. Heliodor is more up. Whoopsie. Heliodor is right here. Let's place it there. Perfect. It's so small. Anyway. Let me now catch up on what you guys were saying. Uh, you guys were talking. Let me get down here. I keep missing stuff because it's so dark at night and then it's hard to see where things are. Okay, there we go. Alrighty. Let me actually scroll up on your comments, because I just went talking for a bit. Okay. Let's see, where did I leave off? Because I was reading your comments and then I just talked for forever. As far as I know, I can change the time and game. Okay. My name is Raina Bort, and I am a massive deal for me. Love my stand fight place. 
swords. Uh, as far as I know, you can't change the time of game. Yeah, I think you can't. Wait, I do a like that. Having a character like that would be hilarious. I'm I am not ready. I am, but am. I am, but am afraid for 107. Uh, I am afraid for 107 as well. 107 could be scary. I can't wait though. It's gonna be really good. Like, I don't think any of us can be disappointed with Ichikawa's ending. Like, if Foss is happy, yay. If Foss is disappoint, if Foss is discarded and disappointed, uh, that's expected. Yeah. <laughs> Can't wait for the anime to, to do the moon arc so we can finally hear Daya's idol music. Well, that's what you're looking forward to. Okay. I mean, just seeing the mood in general would be so cool. I'm still upset it took me so long to get into Hoseki no Kuni. Same! I'm upset about it too. I only became a fan like a couple months ago and then I got a- became a maniac and then I started a YouTube- well, I started my YouTube channel a while ago and then I just started making like 50 Hoseki no Kuni videos and then I deranged into madness and now I'm here. Um, so cannot wait for how the anime will animate the newest Lunarian scenes. Uh, yeah, I agree. Hoseki no Oshi, Idol of Gems. Uh, it's over. A fandom, we should collectively share our favorite Hoseki no Kuni AMVs. True. Uh, no, yeah. I may have a, I have a channel in my Discord server for edits, and I need that, because I don't have, di I, I don't have TikTok. Um. I don't want to get TikTok. This is a personal preference. But you guys can send me all of your TikTok edits so that I don't have to go sifting through TikTok uh, and can just enjoy them. Um, if you all left your transformation resonance. If only season two for for amazing potential AMV scenes. Oh, true. I think Congo was aware of the greater things at play, but didn't enjoy just how much Foss suffered gradually. The degradation humanity building took. Yes, I think that, in in my opinion, because I think the theory I have is that Congo had such a greater role. I think that Congo also pushed Fosh to become a human and to replace him. But I don't think he did it with malicious intent. I don't think he wanted Fosh to suffer. And I just think that it played out that way. But I think that he was with um, Acmea, actually, in pushing Fosh that way. Because we know that Congo... We know that Congo didn't want to be in the role that he put himself in. He said that himself. And... I think that he, just like Acmea, noticed that Foss would be a suitable candidate to take his place. And I think he was pushing Foss with that, with the encyclopedia. Um, in fact, I even think getting to know Cinnabar was part of both of their plans. And Brong, not Brongo, Pitapat, <laughs> need to correct my language. Uh, Pitapat, um, Pitapat, he, he credits... Foss's transformation with Acmea and Congo and Ayumu. All three of those characters he credits Foss's transformation with. And that's because, um, can I? I can't. Sad. That's because I think Congo had a greater role in that than we want to give him credit for. Uh, this looks like a nice place to carve a rock. And so I think that Congo did have a role. I think that Congo wanted it to happen, but I don't think that he wanted Foss to suffer. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, I wonder what would have happened if Foss never went to the moon. I do too. I think the story would be a lot boring if Foss didn't go to the moon though. See, if not a teardrop shape, what shape should I carve these into? Someone was saying that I just carve a teardrop shape and I don't know what to do, and that is true. Um, nothing would have changed. Mm, yes. He did smile after Foss put the eye in. Yeah. Yeah, he did. Oh, yeah. Do ru da Ruma dolls. Oh, yeah, that's crazy. I never noticed that. Yeah, so this was a Reddit post. This isn't my uh, observation. Again, I don't know Buddhism that well, but... Someone on Reddit, that's how you cite things, just someone on the internet. Someone on the internet said that um, Foss uh, was supposed to represent a do, or what Acmea was doing with p replacing Foss's eye with a pearl uh, was Foss representing a, what is it, Duruma doll? And Duruma dolls have different colored eyes to show resolve for um, 
a task that they're supposed to complete, and once the task is complete, then they will have two of the same colored eyes, and that's exactly what happens with Foss. Congo's eyes, the last step in Foss's transformation, showing the completeness of, of Foss's transformation. Foss doesn't get any materials after that. Um, so, yeah, that's a really cool detail that I think was definitely intentional by Ichikawa. Um, I wonder if how, how Congo actually broke and couldn't pray, but could follow human Foss's command to break. He said he had been waiting all of his... He said he, he said something along the lines of he has been waiting all of his life to have a human say that. Honestly, it kind of sounds the same as prayer. Like Foss sort of praying to him to break. Because that's basically the same concept there that they that the Linearians have been fighting for. Everyone in Hoseki no Kuni is depressed. We all know this. But, like, like even Congo. And I think that Foss... Um, I think Congo saw Foss as an out, honestly. But he was smiling when Foss told him to break. He wanted that to happen. Um, I think he was working with Acnea to achieve that. Um, I think that a part of him, like, kind of a brutile, because, you know, everything's a parallel for something. But, like, you know how, like, Padpa kept getting fixed and stuff like that, and was saying that they just didn't want to, like, carry on, but Rutile kept persisting. It kind of might be like that with Kongo and Ayumu, because uh, Kongo did care for Ayumu, yes, that's why he made the gems. That's why the gems are human-like and appear like Ayumu. But, like, Ayumu could have just had him break and not have to deal with the suffering of being without, like, the person he cared for most, basically. Uh, but she didn't. Instead, he had to become lonely, become defective, and take care of the gems. And he knows that he wasn't supposed to do that. In fact, he was supposed to burn the bridge that he, he facilitated the bridge. Foss is the bridge. Congo facilitated the bridge between inorganic life forms and humanity uh, instead of doing what he was supposed to do. That's why he was marked defective. And Foss... Man, I need to add... So, right before this stream, I was, def I was uh, scripting a video about deformity in Hunter... Not Hunter x Hunter. Hoseki no Kuni. And uh, this conversation has just made me realize I need to add Congo to that as well. But... Kongo is fulfilling what Ayumu wants, and then Foss fulfills what Ayumu wants uh, once Foss gets Kongo's eye. Um, and uh, I think Kongo would have rather, like, just like Foss now, Kongo would rather not continue to exist than to serve Ayumu, basically. Uh, and Foss gives Kongo the freedom to do that. So I really think that Congo had an in on it. I think Congo wanted to this. The fact that he said he'd been waiting all of his life for a human to say that, I think tells me that Congo, you know, wanted to die. I think that's every single character in Hizuki no Kuni. Um, and I think it, you know how the characters break from mental strain? I think it's that. Like, nothing physically could hurt uh, Congo, but having your own child that you've raised who's become a human, who's become, like, the thing that you loved most tell you to break and die, I think, uh, mentally broke him, and that's why. But he smiled because that's what he wanted. He wanted to, he wanted to know that his purpose was done. He wanted to know that he had completed his task. And that's the same with Foss. Like, Foss in 106, it's the same. It's the same kind of anguish. Um, Foss doesn't have any more Foss... Yes. Uh, in theory, could human Foss command Congo to pray, or just broken in a prayer sense? Um, I think that it was already established that Foss couldn't get Congo to pray. That's why they needed Foss. I think even Congo realized that. That's why Congo sort of helped with that. That's why we were wondering, because Foss had already tried to beg Congo to pray. It wasn't going to work. All the Lunarians had tried that. It wasn't going to work to get Congo to pray. That's why when Foss did the invasion arc, and went to go see Congo, we were wondering what Foss was going to do, because, or at least this is my interpretation, because we knew that prayer wasn't going to work. Prayer was not going to work. 
uh, asking Congo to pray did nothing. We know that because Congo's defective and all that, you know. And so, Foss, like, I feel like I'm not making sense. But Foss, so Foss asked Congo to break. I think just because of because of out of pure pure frustration, and I think Foss believed that if Congo was broken, that uh, I think Foss believed that if Congo was broken, things would somehow get better. Like if Congo wasn't there, this is so sad. If Congo wasn't there, maybe the Linarians would no longer have like to use like things as a bargaining chip stuff like that. Like, you know, Congo is the reason for all the Congo conflict. If Congo was gone, maybe the conflict would stop, I think is what Foss was thinking. Um, sadly. And I think this is another Ben. Yeah, I, I don't know what I'm doing. So that's what I think Foss was thinking when Foss asked Congo to break. But of course they had other plans. Um... And I think it was also just out of pure frustration for Congo. Because we know that Foss was very frustrated with him. For, uh, for, your, for obvious reasons. Um, well, I don't know. No. I don't have any more Fossil Full Light. Literally everyone during the hiatus. <laughs> True. Uh, Ruby got removed. Removed. Oh yeah, that's when I cut the ruby wrong. Let's go for a swim. Yeah, I keep falling out of windows. Actually, I haven't been in the, in the back school area, actually. I don't think I went back here before. It's very pretty. There's a stairway over here. Or no, I think this is just the side one. Okay. Become a jellyfish, yes. When I go into the pond, I become a jellyfish. I use Vim, by the way. Uh, symbolism is crazy. Symbolism in Hoseki no Kuni is so good. It's excellent. It's wonderful. It's marvelous. Uh, 1,000 years of... I can't read. M marinating. Yeah. I think we just enamor... I think he was just enamored with humanity. Forcing the gems to conform to hum human culture and Foss was the most human of them all. That's true, too. I mean, Congo didn't consider the gems human, still. Um, like, let that sink in. He wanted the gems to mimic humanity, and, you know, in my video about humanity as chairs, like, uh, I told you how, like, the gems really just fail at mimicking humanity because they have no idea what it looks like. They have all, they lack all of the human features needed to fully act human, but Foss doesn't. And so I think, like, it could have been that as well. Congo was just finally so happy to see a human again. Uh, try pressing alt F. No. Um, those, these 1,000 years are great, are going great. I think he, let's see, I post my edits, uh, YouTube, but I took them all down. I'm putting a post in the event since Stick Shock probably getting banned in the US. Oh, yeah. I mean, they keep saying they're gonna ban Tuk Tuk. We'll see if that happens, but... Yeah, you might have to move to YouTube. I don't know. I just don't like TikTok as a social media as much. Um, I don't have Instagram anymore. I used to use Instagram Reels too, but I slowly realized that like, the only reason I opened up Instagram was anime memes and the one account that posts baby pig pictures. Those were the only reasons I had Amazon. Uh, not Amazon. <laughs> I keep saying the wrong thing. The only reason I had Instagram um, so I don't use Instagram anymore. Even though I think Instagram would probably be good for me to grow on there, like, if I want to, like, share art or something, but I don't know. I, I just don't like it. A lot of my friends are on Instagram, though, so it's, like, a good way to keep up with friends and stuff, but I don't know. I would rather catch up with, my, like, my friends in person or over messaging rather than through, like, random things they post on Instagram. That's just my opinion. Um... After Hose at Kanukuni, I've been reading more about gemstones and fully transformed into the erg actually emoji. <laughs> yeah, 
No, becoming a rock nerd because of Hoseki no Kuni. Um, I, I mean, I have a lot of friends who became rock nerds because of, like, Steven Universe and stuff, you know. Uh, I also just generally don't like TikTok, so, yeah, I don't... I mean, I barely been on TikTok, just in general. Um, because I downloaded the app once. The only reason I downloaded it is because I started posting, like, TikTok posts. Uh, I only posted one and then gave up and then I didn't want to do it. I don't know. I just don't like the app. Um, I am much more of a long form content person. Uh, I do like edits though, like short edits of a uh, series I like. It's okay. I called Pitapat Eyeball Guy. We all had our different names for uh, Brongo or Pitapat or whatever his name is. I'm still getting used to Pitapat. Um, Tick Tick is great to find new things. I like Gore. Oh no. Um, Princess Cut, that's my favorite. Uh, carve it teardrop still. You want me to carve everything into a teardrop? That's what I've been doing. Let's carve another gem. Let's see. Will I get lost in thought again? Probably. Uh, what's this yellow one? Crystal barrel? Let's carve crystal barrel. Ooh, it's a star! That's pretty. Um, is it possible to carve a circle with these gems? You know, we can try with this one, because it's already a star. It's kind of pretty as a star. But, um... Let's see, if we wanted to make this a circle, just go around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then it's just me carving time. Okay. Uh, let's see. Ichik Ichikawa just accidentally being enrolled in a Buddhist school, and that informing half of her work going forward is wild. I interpret it as, uh, yeah, I mean, like, the influence in your life will come through in your work, or just your life experience. I mean, if she was going through Buddhism classes, that's going to reflect in her work. Um, you know. Which, I don't know, like, that's fine. It's like if you grew up in a different, like, it's like how there's different cultures and countries. Like, depending on where you grew up will shape how your writing is based on your cultural values and, and things like that. Um, I mean, that's also why, like, we like a certain type of medium, uh, like anime and stuff, and like Japanese storytelling. Like, Japanese storytelling, I'm, I plan to make a video on this, actually. But, um, J Japan has a different version of the hero's journey, which is seen in, like, Ghibli movies and Hoseki no Kuni, which is why I'm going to make a video on it, uh, which is very different from how stories are constructed in the West. Is that the correct terminology? Like, in the other side of the world. Um, and it's why the stories feel really different from, like, the very plot-centered stories in, like, America and stuff. Um, and... Like I said, I, I will. I can't see my gem now. The sun is too bright. I think I have it bright at the sun as it's coming up. It looks cool, but yeah. Um, but you know that'll all influence like how you do it. Like even because like stories are written differently, like and are taught to be written differently based on Japan or like America. Um, I probably other countries too. I wouldn't know, but yeah. Um, I interpret it as him to be, to finally be relieved of his duty, to have a replacement, to be free. Yeah, that's what I think Congo was to. Uh, thank you for answering. Of course, I don't know which question that was for. I have no idea what to do with my unwritten manga slash light novel that's inspired by Hoseki no Kuni. Uh, depressed rock people. Oh, oh, oh. Um... I mean, are you almost done? Are you... Oh, you're unwritten? My unwritten... Write it down. That's what you should do. 
change it so that it's less like Hoseki no Kuni and then publish it so that um, you're not infringing on Hoseki no Kuni's IP. I have a lot of uh, existing stories that I want to work on uh, that I made before Hoseki no Kuni, but they are very similar vibes to Hoseki no Kuni just because that's the type of story I like. It's almost like we read stuff that we like. But, um, what am I saying? I really like Hoseki no Kuni. Uh, I need to actually work on those at some point. I, I just don't have free time right now. I'd like to. I say free time, but it's like, if you really want to do something, you'll make time for it. But yeah. I... I have a, like, a written novel. Like, it's fully done written. But... And I was gonna publish it. But... I'm thinking I might just reformat the entire story as a comic. Because that's originally what I wanted it to be. Of course, that'll take a lot longer. And I do already have it finished written as a novel. So I guess I could maybe publish it as a novel and then publish it as a comic, maybe? But, I don't know, if I if originally intended it to be a comic, and then I wrote it as a novel, maybe it's better for me to just make it a novel and not release... Not m make it as a comic and not release the novel, is what I'm saying. I don't know. Um, do ro da Daruma dolls are made of wood. They tend to be made, uh, to made close to New Year and have blank eyes. The day of New Year, they are given pupils that are wished for something. They, the time of New Year, they are burned. Oh, that's interesting. Kind of like how Foss is burned in the M106, or their human version. No, we have a hole in our, in our rock. I guess we'll go with that. Ooh, maybe I should just make a video on just do ra do ra how do you pronounce it? Daruma dolls specifically in Hoseki no Kuni. But I'm planning to make a video about eyes, so I'll probably have that included in the eye video. Um plop in the water again. Cosplaying uh Admiral Abyss. Um to fill the wish. Yeah, I think that's what Foss's transformation is supposed to show is them fulfilling the wish of all the people that they are indebted to and all the people that they become a link to and their the wish of humanity i guess foss can be a representation of human desire itself because they are the desire their purpose everything that they do is the desires of the lunarians and the people around them that's deep anyway i had a whole conversation with people on discord today i don't think they're in the stream uh, cause I think they are sleeping, cause th I was like, I gotta go, cause I was meant to script videos and I didn't get any of that done, cause we were talking about really good Hoseki no Kuni stuff. Uh, and then they're like, it's 1am, or 3am, and I'm like, guys, go to sleep. Um, but we were talking about, um, the latest chapter, and, like, what representations, like, Foss has. And we were talking about human desire, and Foss uh, representing human desire and what that means for the story. Um, they kept saying that we've, we, like, talk, we like talked on Discord for like four hours or something about this. And they're like, we basically have a script for you. And I'm like, I, I, that is true. I don't know if I... Blah. I do want to make a video probably on human desire, so we'll probably do that eventually. But yeah, it's very interesting. The fact that Foss is supposed to represent the wish of all humanity. Uh, let's see. Stop making me cry. Well, I'm sorry. Cope. If only you weren't here. Oh yeah, that was a sad line. I wish I learned more about Admiral Elvis. Oh, me too. I would read a spinoff about the Admir Admiral Elvis lore. Ah! And just, like, the little, like, sea slugs. I wish we knew more about the Admiral Elvis, but I think their story would be a lot less interesting. Also, really, really weird. Because the- what little we do know about the Admiral Abysses are kind of weird, I gotta be honest. Um, it's just interesting that I think that only like 5% of their population is male or something. I think that percentage is wrong. But they have a very low amount of 
like, their gender ratio is completely off. Maybe that's why they went extinct. I mean, I don't know. Um, you guys, is it normal to feel like being watched when home alone- Oh, no, no, I'm home alone right now. And the people above me are doing, like, somersaults. Um, like, because I am in an apartment, I'm at the bottom floor, and there's an apartment above me, because that's how that works. And last night I was, like, trying to go to sleep, and it really sounds like the, the people above me are, like, doing somersaults at, like, 3 a.m. I don't know. It wasn't 3 a.m. It was, like, no, it wasn't the a.m.s. So, I don't know. It's, like, they were, it sounded like they were doing somersaults up there. I think that they might be, I don't know. I think they might be doing weird things up there. Or exercising. Maybe they're exercising. I know it's a group of guys above me. Um, but, yeah. I've never talked to them. I don't talk to my neighbors. I'm not very friendly. Um, I'm friendly with people I know well, but I'm, like, a pure introvert if I don't know people. Um, yeah. Uh, and then, it sometimes sounds like the door is opening, but it could just be someone else's door. Um, sometimes, and then I always fear that, like, someone is gonna come in, even though all my roommates and stuff are gone. That's also why I'm streaming right now, is because my roommate is not in here, and she usually goes to bed at 10 p.m., and it's past that now. Um, I always get that feeling, do you guys too? Yeah. I'm very rarely home alone. Like, even in my life, because my parents didn't allow me home alone for the longest time, that home alone is such, like, a surreal fearing, feeling for me, because I'm, I'm almost never alone, like, actually. Because I've... I only had my own room to myself for like six months and then my parents gave it, it decided that I didn't that I needed a uh, room by myself less than like my little brother. Can you tell who the fa who the least favorite child is? Anyway, um, I never got a I only had a room to myself for like a couple months and then I was back in with my sister and I love my sister. I like sharing a room with her, but you know, Sometimes you want your own space, and so I've, I've, like, my entire life, I've rarely ever, like, been alone, like, in, at home, or anything like that. The only reason I was able to get, like, 30 Jose Kanokuni videos made was because I was, um, because I was, like, home alone for a month during December, because I moved, and everyone was spending time with their family during the m winter break for college and I got to stay in my apartment and experience like being alone for like it living alone for like a month um let's see I keep forgetting that I'm catching up on chat um maybe in another universe the Lunarians felt like they wanted to live forever I mean, don't, don't people still say that they want to live forever here? I don't think living forever is as horrifying as we do say that living forever is. Um, I think the horrifying part is living forever and being miserable, which is what the, Lunari the Lunarians face. That's the problem with living forever. Uh, assumably, we assume that if we live forever and are happy, then it's not that bad. But living forever and being miserable sounds awful, because it most likely is, uh, with what the Lunarians are going through. Um, yeah, there's so much interesting things we can explore about the Admirabilis. There is, uh, they are very interesting. I did wish they get they got like a lot more screen time. I'm not sure if, like, the screen time they can would take up a lot, but I guess it would just be, like, a whole different story. I just feel like there is a lot less to talk about them, maybe? But, yeah. Uh... Let's see. I also think that it wouldn't be the same vibe as the Lunarians and the Gems, because the, they all have very different vibes. Uh, ah, it'd be cool to get some open word like this, but with the moon chapters incorporated. Oh, 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 I, so the creators of the game were in my first stream of this. I don't know if they're in here now. Probably not. Uh, but what I, I like jokingly said, I was like, oh, will you be able to do the moon too? 
And they were like, uh, if they ever finish the Earth, I guess. Because they're not done with this game yet, they're still updating it. Um, but yeah, it would be really cool to see, like, the moon in, like, Lunarian base and stuff like that. I am sleepy. I'll probably go to bed straight after the stream. Uh, let's see, where was I? I had been... Uh, I had been a rock for nerd forever. Uh, it's so bad that I want to be a rock. <laughs> the Hoseki no Kuni experience. I don't know, I've never wanted to be a rock. I don't know, I can't think about wanting to be an inanimate object. I wanted to be, like, different animals and stuff. Like, I think that would be cool. Uh, the time I got reincarnated as a rock, isn't that- Like, some people think that Foss is a reincarnation of a Yumu. So, is Hoseki no Kuni an isekai? I don't want to answer that question. As an American that does write a lot, I've been so active in foreign communities that my writing doesn't feel very American, LMAO. I mean, that's not a bad thing. Um, I like, obviously, I like Japanese writing a lot more than American writing. Uh, like, it's just interesting how the story structures are different and stuff. Uh, there are, like, people say that, like, there are rules to writing, and, yeah, I guess a little bit. Like, I mean, there's rules for, like, how to write a scene good, how to write, um, characters, stuff like that. Uh, but the, like, the actual story structure can take many forms. Like, not just the regular hero's journey of, like, um, a change. Which you do see that in Hosei Kanukuni. Like I said, I want to make a video analyzing the westernized version of the hero's journey compared to the- what is it called? I have it in my Discord, actually. Not my Discord, but in a different one. Kisho Tenketsu. Kisho Tenketsu is the basically he hero's journey version in Japanese. And Kiso... what was it? Ki Kisho Tenketsu is very different from how westerners are learned- are taught to write a story. And a lot of Japanese media follows that instead of what we consider the hero's journey. Or like, you know, plot, rising action, like that sort of thing, and like climax, it's completely different. It's like development, I have a- let me get up the diagram. I have, a, I have diagrams say for it, because I do want to make multiple videos about this technique. So instead of like, uh, like initial action, I forgot what it is. Uh, like initial action, like rising action, and then like climax, and like falling action, and then conclusion. Uh, Kisho Tenketsu is introduction, so you, introduc you introduce the world, you introduce the characters, and a thing with Japanese media, or maybe just good stories in general that I've noticed a lot with a lot of my favorite stories, is they introduce everyone important in the first like couple like instances of the story. Like, even though Acmea wasn't introduced until way later, he you could feel his presence with the Lunarians. I, and Brongo isn't even- not Brongo, sorry, Pitipat. Pitipat isn't even a surprise, because Pitipat is also the Ice Flows, and the Ice Flows have been here in the story forever. It's like that. All the important characters, all the big major players in the story, are introduced or hinted at at the beginning. Uh, and then the development. So instead of having a basic plot, and then following it as an action, uh, instead, you're introducing the world, you're introducing the characters, and then the ca the characters are supposed to develop in some way. Uh, the world is supposed to develop in some way. Uh, in a good way, in a bad way, who knows. Uh, and then there isn't- I guess there's a point of, like, climax, but that isn't the, the thing. Uh, there, there comes a point in the development where there is a twist, and I feel like the twist in Hoseki no Kuni- there's, like, so many twists in Hoseki no Kuni. And, of course, any good, like- more episodic series is going to have multiple of these. So with every single chapter, there's the introduction, there's the development, there's the twist, and then there's the conclusion. Like, every single Ichikawa chapter is like that, uh, because this is how, like, Japanese are taught to conduct stories. Um, and so you see that in Hoseki no Kuni, uh, with them developing the world, learning about the Lunarians, learning how the Gem Society functions, and then Foss, it, Foss themselves could be considered the twist in the Hoseki no Kuni story. Um, and then you get the conclusion, which we're in the conclusion stage right now, and I can't wait to see how it concludes, you know, as a true Hoseki no Kuni fan. Uh, let's check the chat again, because I keep trailing off. Um... Uh, 
Oh, it was like the sky change and it scared me. Sponsored by Adidas Knife and okay. It makes sense since in Japanese culture they are more focused on eyes and expression. Well, in the West they're more focused on the mouth expression. Also explains why eyes in manga are, are so exaggerated. Yeah, you can tell in like American cartoons that they focus on the mouth and Japanese is the eyes. Uh, it, it, and that's again like a cultural lens. It's like a different thing that you're looking for. Um, to Japanese people, the eyes are more expressive. To Americans, the mouth is more expressive. That's just how it is. I'm probably reaching. No, that's actually. I've seen multiple people make that uh, assumption. Um, that is why the eyes are so exaggerated in uh, anime and stuff. Uh, it's it's very interesting. I think it's also a fact of. Um, it's also, this is also a very interesting note, uh, Kabuki, Japanese theater, um, they exaggerated the eyes a lot with, like, eye makeup and stuff, and, uh, and anime, anime in general, is an extension of Kabuki, uh, of Kabuki, that's why the characters in anime don't really act like Japanese people, uh, that's why people say you shouldn't learn Japanese from anime, is because the characters uh, in anime are very over exaggerated and in not exactly and not how uh, people in Jap Japan live in their day to day lives, um, and that stems from kabuki, which is traditional Japanese theater. Um, and if any of you, again, I don't want to dox my Genshin players. If any of you play Genshin, uh, Skara's original name was Kabuki Mono, which is so funny. I laughed out loud when I realized what that meant. Uh, but it, it basically just meant he was a highly eccentric person or something like that. But it means, like, very exaggerated, theatrical, um, that sort of thing, because kabuki is Japanese theater. And that extends to anime. That's actually why uh, female voices in, in anime are so high-pitched, is because that's what the actors did in old Japanese times uh, in order to mimic women, because there were no women in the actual plays because like you're like in Shakespeare and stuff like too too uh, the female roles were played by men uh, because they didn't allow women on stage and so that highly exaggerated like female voice that we hear in like anime and stuff is still a remnant of that uh, because that's how they distinguish the women from the men in the in kabuki theater um, how this relates to Ozeki no Kuni uh, that's why, actually, it was such a shock when I learned that Fa said Watakashi. Because I have, I've actually never heard Watakashi used in any anime or manga. Uh, well, I haven't read as many manga. I'm more anime-focused, but I'm now switching to more of a manga focus with my weebness. But that's why when I learned that Watakashi, like, Fa said Watakashi in 90, I was like, that's crazy. Like, that's actually crazy. Because no one in anime says that because their Japanese is so exaggerated and so informal that, like, no one, like, says Watakashi. Like, Watakashi is even rarely used. It, it was insane to me. That's why I made a whole video on it. Like, I immediately made a video on it because I was like, that is an insane fact. Why is no one putting more emphasis on this? Uh, but I love how Ichikawa uses Japanese language in that way, too. The way that she uses Japanese language is very interesting and artistful. I love it. Uh, but yeah, cultural, like, stuff changes story. Uh, yeah. Matakure. That's Foss saying that they'll return. Also, in my in that video, I talked about how. Um, do I hear gems? Is it down here? Oh, I'm hearing things, guys. So, also in that video, I talked about how I didn't know- yeah, it is there. I talked about how I didn't know if Foss used Omaya for Cinnabar. Um, what I did find out in rereading the series in, Eng in Japanese is that Foss uses- I haven't heard Foss use Kimi. I thought that cost my- Foss might- I'm stuck. Where am I? I thought that Foss might use Kimi uh, with the gems, maybe. Because um, I've never heard the gems use... Uh, 
okay, it's still there. I've never heard the gems use in Nata. Okay, I don't know. I, like I said, I haven't read a lot of it in Japanese. That's why I'm rereading it. But Foss used Omae for Ventricosis, I think is like a joking sense, because Foss was really mad at Ventricosis, uh, you know, for what they did to Foss, obviously. But um, I, ha I haven't heard Foss say you to Cinnabar yet. It's going to be gone by the time I get here, maybe. Where's the, like... Here it is. So, Foss does use Omae before, because in my video I was like, did Foss use Omae before? Um, but I, I think that Foss no didn't use Omae to refer to Cinnabar, but Foss did use Omae to refer to Ventricosis, uh, but F Foss did it more in a joking sense, um, you know. But also, like, because Foss didn't like Ventricosis at the beginning for obvious reasons, and to be a bit disrespectful because they didn't like them. Uh, being human is very strange. We're so simple yet so complicated. True. Agreed. Uh, hey guys, I guess that's it. Famous last word from a live stream, 13, 31 August 2020. Yeah. <laughs> With who's like no kuni? I don't know. I don't get the reference yet. I am an only child, so being home alone is off often. But I'm always alone. Oh, gems. I'm an only child, so being al home alone is often. But I'm always alone with a single parent, so having more than one other person in my house is so so strange. See, I grew up with a family of six. I have three siblings, and I've shared a room with my sister since birth. And in fact, we at one point we had, um, man, that still bo bothers me. At one point we had three people in our room. Uh, we had me, my sister, and my little brother were all in one room. We had three beds in our room. Um, my little brother was getting too big for his bed though, and my mom then decided to move me to the guest room and made the guest room a bedroom. And then I was finally happy that I got my own room. I finally get to do that. And then she was like, you know what? Uh, my little brother deserves uh, his own room more than me. So then she put me back with my sister. Um, which I don't mind because I love my sister. I minded then because I was like, I finally got my own room. I finally got a space to my own. Oh man. I actually, uh, I actually was like, I got a little like t t flashbacks, depression, trauma flashbacks, but I went to go see, I was at a friend's house the other day. Uh, was that yesterday? The days all went together. Yeah, it was yesterday. And she was talking about how she had lived in her room for all her life. Uh, she's a little older than me. She's actually my sister's age. Um, she had been in her room all her life and she had different things from all throughout her life. Like she had a trophy from third grade and stuff like that. And she really got, the thing is I never really got to decorate my room because it was always my, I always viewed my room as my sister's room. I even still call it my sister's room to this day because I don't see it as my room. Because my sister, ever since I was born, ever since we were little, told me that her room, that it was her room, she was there first, she was born first. So I always felt like I was just intruding on someone else's space, like for, for all my life. Um, and we're more of a shared space now, but now my sister is at the house more than me, so it's still her space. Um, and so I never really had like my own space. I never got, me, both me and my sister never really got to decorate a room in general because my parents didn't really see a need in that. Uh, and so whenever, I actually got a little like trauma flashback sad, like, Whenever my uh, friend was just talking about how she had everything, she could, she could decorate her room for everyone, because I just realized that I never got that as a child, you know? Um, but it's really weird to me to think, when I, for me it's weird to be home alone, because I had so many siblings, and my parents never let us home alone. Uh, my, my parents didn't let me home alone until I was like 17, and it would be like, it would be like for like 30 minutes to an hour or something. It wouldn't be a long time. So I've rarely ever been like actually alone in my entire life because uh, 
my parents just had me under constant surveillance and I didn't have a space to myself for like all of my childhood. And even when I moved to college, I always had roommates. Uh, uh, yeah. So it's just kind of a weird concept for me to be home alone in general, which I am right now, which means I can scream, except I have people who live uh, on top of me who probably can hear me, which sometimes make me self-conscious, but I never meet them. So <laughs> this is why I don't know my neighbors. Uh, yeah. But yeah, being at home is a weird concept, or being home alone is a weird concept to me just because I've constantly uh, been around people. Uh, let's see. I don't think the human mind is con con conductive for to do to eternity. Yeah, that makes sense. We we would experience like mental entropy or just nap for a hundred years, etc. Time not being a concept would uh, f us. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I agree with you there. I mean, that's why dementia is a thing. Like our bodies aren't meant to last for that long. Um. You know, that's why we have mental fatigue. In fact, if you, like, study neuroscience and stuff, um, there comes a point... I mean, as we get older, our body uh, forgets how to repair itself. That's literally what happens. That's why it takes longer for people who are older to heal, because the body just forgets to repair itself or it keeps making mistakes, because the DNA, like, isn't fresh, basically. And um, it happens with the mind, too. It's just that, you know, the mind decays uh, just as the body does. And that's why we aren't supposed to, like, last for a long time. But it's also, like, how Ventricosa says in, like, Kozeki no Kuni, is that, like, death gives life meaning. Uh, because we have limited time, it makes it that we have to do the best that we have with, like, what we're given, basically. Like, we don't know when we're going to die. Um, we don't know how long we're going to live. Um, anyone can be gone at any moment. That's why we are with other, that's why we interact with other people. That's why we do it because you never know when the last time you'll be with someone will be. In fact, um, there's a quote in the lore book from Karen Gorm's, uh, fashion designer talking about weddings because weddings is not a concept, which makes Karen Gorm and Acme's relationship even worse, but this isn't about that. But Karen, but Karen Gorm's like fashion designer who designed Karen Gorm's wedding dress, uh, basically was talking about how, uh, like she thought, I, I say you, hey, she, I, she had like, they had like a more feminine name, which is why I say that, but you know, it's really they, them, but <clears throat> they were talking about how it was really weird that ancient creatures, aka us, humans, it was really weird that humans threw such extravagant celebrations for what they said, quote unquote, everything. Like birthdays, like Christmas, like we, we celebrate stuff like that. We give holidays to things, we give things to celebrate. And why do we do that? It's because our time is valuable and a celebration gives us an excuse to spend time with friends and family who we may not see forever. Uh, and um, it's really interesting because I think it's Quintetta. I think that's uh, the Lunarian's name. But uh, they talk about how they literally said this. They're like, wow, the ancient creatures really uh, celebrated everything. They must have a lot of time on their hands. Like the Lunarians really don't understand humans at all. They don't understand us at all. Uh, Quintetta uh, made it uh, believed that since we don't, since we celebrate everything we must have a lot of time to be able to put that much effort into stuff but it's actually the opposite we memory it's because we don't have a lot of time that we celebrate everything it's because yeah it's because our lives have a time limit it's because that everyone will eventually die and we don't know when we're gonna die it's because of that that we celebrate things, because we don't know when we'll, the la we don't know when it'll be the last celebration we have with someone. We don't know when uh, someone's last birthday is going to be. We don't know when uh, we'll see people again, especially when our lives get busier as we get older. I mean, I'm not that old, but you know, as I've got o gotten older, as our lives get busier, it's harder to connect with people. Celebrations give us the chance to reconnect with people. And uh, the reason why 
we have celebrations is because of our fleeting life and the fact that we do technically have a short lifespan. Even though we, I think we're kind of medium in the animal kingdom. I don't know. But it's be it's due to our our lack of time that we celebrate things, which I just found really interesting. Again, deep stuff in Jose Kanakuni. I love it. Uh, yeah. Uh, I need to catch up on what you guys are saying again. If you live forever, can you take things as slowly as you want? No need to rush. But then that gets into procrastination. Yeah, uh, Congo can take as long as he wants to find Cinnabar a job. Uh, will he ever do it? Because he said that he had been working on it. He had been working on it for years. I believe Cinnabar is like over 2,000 or something. Um, like, was he ever going to get that done? With the influx of time comes the influx of procrastination. Uh, will you ever get anything done if there's not a time thing sensitive thing for it? That's actually why Foss works so hard to get Cinnabar a job, is because Cinnabar verbatim told Foss that they are trying to get kidnapped and taken to the moon. Uh, and so Foss now has a time limit to try and save Cinnabar because of that. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Need to rush. Humans have a tendency to transform. Living forever is not as painful for you. Uh, won't be uh, won't be detached from other living creatures. Although people's lifespans would be as uh, etern et eternal as that of fruit fly. Would be as eternal as that of fruit fly. Interesting. I don't exactly know what you're talking about. I'm gonna be honest. Won't be detached. Oh, you're saying living forever is not pain is not as painful for you. Won't be detached from other living creatures. Although people's lifespans lifetime would be as eternal as a fruit fly. Yeah, like uh, I mean, it sounds like you're saying that if we did live eternally, we would be detached from organisms or not be detached from other living things. Um, I do love Wanderer's Story and Genshin Impact. Okay, I was talking to my friends, because uh, my friends are big Genshin players, and they were like, you need to make Genshin videos, <laughs> because uh, there's a lot more people in the Genshin community <laughs> than there are in the Jose Kanukuni community. Uh, I'm not sure if I'll make a lot of Genshin videos, I don't know, but I, I do want to make a video on Wanderer a lot, because I am a Scara main. I have C3 Scara. But, uh, yeah, I, the, basically the only reason I play Genshin now is just for him. I love his backstory so much. I think it's probably the best thing written in Genshin, and I think the writing in Genshin varies much. So I probably will make a video on that. It's midnight, I can't sleep. Ah, I've joined the sleep stream. Well, I'm glad you're here. I always play, I always play the album any, everywhere at the end of time. I like it, Dimitri is sad. Are you going to be here for the stream where we, uh, that's in a couple days, where we listen to it and draw Foss. Uh, I'm excited for it. I think it's going to be really fun. Um, that's uh, that's so scary to think about. I've been left alone for hours on end before, though my dad is strict. Being put under helicopter parents is horrifying to me. My parents are mega helicopter parents. Like we weren't allowed to like, go anywhere without them knowing who we were with. We weren't allowed to, like, I wasn't allowed to, like, walk, like, within, like, not seeing distance of my mom or else she would, like, get mad because she's like, I need to know where you are at all times. My mom constantly thought that if we went outside for, like, two seconds, we would get kidnapped. So she would, like, tell us, like, uh, so, like, e like I had to, we had to, like, ask for permission if we wanted to go outside or if we wanted to go in the backyard because she just like, had the anxiety that we would just get kidnapped if that was the case, if we, we went there without her knowing or something. My mom is paranoid. Like, actually, I think my mom is actually paranoid. But, yeah. Um. Uh, I like world building, and I have this story, but I didn't plan an ending, so it just became a world building project, but I got unsatisfied and it's now in hiatus until I figure out a direction to that. Yeah, I, I, 
uh, I guess not every single story, but most stories I write, I like to have an ending in mind. Um, there's on one of the stories that I still have that I want to do. Um, and uh, every single one of the endings that I write are super depressing usually. I don't like happy endings. Like, for me, a lot of people hated the Noragami ending. I don't know how many of you are not Noragami fans here. I won't spoil it. But a lot of people hated the Noragami ending because it was a bit open-ended. And it was very sad for what the story was going for. Uh, I liked it because I like depressing endings. And I think that it, it communicated the themes really well. And that's all I care about. All I care is that the ending wraps up the story in a really nice way. Uh, and that all the themes and lessons throughout the story are clear. Which the Norgami ending was, but it was very sad in the sense that things that the fans would have wanted didn't happen. And I like endings like that, where you don't get what you want. Because to me, that's more realistic. Because in life, I don't think you'll, you'll get what you want most of the time. So an ending where uh, everything gets wrapped up in a nice little bow, but it's not as satisfying as like an ending where like everyone lived happily ever after. Like... I like that in stories. So most of the stories that I've written, the endings are very, like, neutral. Uh, or very sad or depressing, but everything gets resolved. And I like endings like that, so... Uh, I guess, heads up, if you ever do, like, follow me in stories I create, uh, the endings might not be as happy as you would like. But I like that. Those are the type of stories I like. Story for me to take. Eternity is far too cool for you. Someone quoted that. Interesting. Home Alone equal quarter to the back two backers. I've never watched Home Alone. I want to. I just haven't. Uh, there's a l my parents also didn't let us watch a lot of media growing up. Like I wasn't allowed to watch the Disney Channel. <clears throat> Don't ask how I've been watching anime since I was nine. Uh, we weren't allowed to watch the Disney Channel because it was too mature for us. And I still stayed clear of the Disney Channel even though I was watching anime because my parents demonized it so much. Uh, we weren't allowed to watch Nickelodeon, um, we weren't allowed to watch, like, a lot of things. The only thing my parents allowed us to watch were Phineas and Ferb, they barely let us allowed, allowed us to watch Phineas and Ferb. We were allowed to watch Clone Wars and we were allowed to watch Avatar The Last Airbender, which I'm glad, because those are the only two shows you need, uh, Clone Wars and Avatar The Last Airbender. But, um, yeah, uh, I am not as cultured because they didn't let us watch certain series. They wouldn't let us watch Snow White, and they wouldn't let us watch Beauty and the Beast. They wouldn't let us watch uh, Sleeping Beauty either. So I hadn't watched like any of those classic films. I had to search them up at some point, and I was like, I should watch these just because everyone else has watched them. Um, my mom even admitted later that she didn't know why she didn't let us watch Beauty and the Beast when we were little. We had Ariel on VHS tape, and they took it away at some point because they my, my parents didn't like something in Ariel, and we had already seen the film several times. But they were like, oh no, you can't watch it anymore. And we were like, okay, because you can't go against what your parents say. Um, yeah. The talk of humans is only making me love our species. Uh, hold on. This is not helping my anxiety. The talk of humans is only making me love our species more. I love humans unlike some. I mean, yeah, there's like such a, like, it's a balanced sort of thing. There's some terrible things about humanity and like what happens in the world, but there's also some great beauty in it, you know? And that's what Foss says in 106, is that a human is a package of both, you know? There's good and there's bad within us, basically. Um... Uh, had uh, so when Baldur's Gate three steam. Uh, I act I don't know much about Baldur's Gate. Um, I know that my boy boyfriend has played it. Uh, should I do a Baldur's Gate three steam? I'm open to playing other games. I have to finish Amori first, because <laughs> I need to finish the game. But I don't know. I feel people celebrate just to have fun. No need to think about the future. I mean that too, but you celebrate with the people you care about, right? And it's always nice to make it an excuse to celebrate things because, uh, you know, um, you like spending time with the people around you and because you like spending time with them. I, it's not like a thought on people's minds that this might be the last time you might spend time with someone, but the reason why we want to spend time with our family is because we know that that time is precious and that time is precious is because we die. Um, how old... Uh, how old was Yellow again? Yellow's like, I think like 
almost 4,000. There's like, they're like 3,000 something something. I think it's Yellow's age. Um, your profile reminds me of Amori. Oh yeah, I can see that. Uh, one of my, uh, one of my fans actually drew, drew my profile picture for, picture for me. That's why it's like, like that. And I was like, thanks. That's very sweet of you. Uh, the little, like, person playing in the corner, it, which is me, I made specifically for my Amori streams. I just tacked it on this as well for, like, the gaming thing. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm going to stream Amori in two days? On Wednesday. Um, and I'm gonna make it a longer stream. Because I really want to finish Amori, but I get distracted so easily in games. I mean, I'm just frolicking about while I talk about Hoseki no Kuni with this game. Let's carve another rock. <laughs> Let's see, which rock should we carve? Uh, I think I've carved you close already. Goshenite? Sure. It flashy. Um... Genshin symbol is insane too. Oh yeah, Genshin is so detailed with that. I mean, I'm obsessed with Wanderer and Genshin, so I know a lot about that. But I Wanderer is also there's so many reasons why Wanderer is my favorite character in Genshin. But um, like he's also just like the embodiment of Japanese culture, and I absolutely love that as a weeb. Um, just with like his name. Uh, also. It's 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 a mix actually. It's Japanese and um, just because of the like harbinger aesthetic as well. But yeah, um, there's so much like Japanese culture in Wander's entire backstory and design, which is why I love it. Uh, but this isn't about Genshin, and I don't want to dox myself. I'm a Farina and Wanderer bias. There's so many people who like Farina and Wander. I haven't finished the Fontaine Archon quest yet. Oh, I need to do my Genshin dailies. I haven't done that yet either, actually. <laughs> I'll be doing that after this stream. Um, but yeah. Uh, or I mean your PNG thingy. Yeah, that's what I thought you were mentioning. Yeah, I specifically made that for my Amori streams. That's why. I tried to draw it in somewhat of the Amori style. Uh, let's see. I think it's obvious I like blue. I love blue too. Blue's my favorite color, or teal. Foss's like hair color is actually like basically my favorite color. Another reason to love Foss. Um, I think there's a video on it, but can you calculate the amount of time you'll likely spend you'll you'll likely spend with your parents, loved ones, etc.? Our limited existence is what makes that measure time we have so bright. I mean, that depends. Uh, I think there's a video on it. Can you calculate the amount of time you likely spend with your parents, loved ones, etc.? I think, like, it also depends on how much you spend at work. Because, you know, it's like choosing work or something like that. I don't know. Do you guys put your family or the people you care about over success in your career? I guess it's like a thing of, like, uh close relationships or prestige. I don't know. For me, I feel like you should put your family and friends and people close to you over your work, but I know not everyone agrees. Uh, but yeah, it, it's interesting to know, uh, uh, what am I saying? It's interesting to know how much time you have with your loved ones and stuff like that, but it definitely depends, because there are people who go out of their way to spend time with their loved ones, and people who don't. I don't know. Uh, let's see. As a winter- as a writer. As a writer, yeah, having an ending in mind help, helps, I think. It also depends on how you write stories, too. I want to make a video on how Ichikawa writes stories, actually, because there's an interview where she talks about her method for writing a story, and it's super interesting. I've actually never heard it before, which is probably why Hoseki no Kuni is really unique. Um, but I wanted to make a story to go with that video as part of me, like, studying how she writes stories. Uh, and I haven't done that yet because I am busy with school and stuff. 
Uh, I like nuanced endings. It doesn't have to be happy. It just has to make sense uh, and be be in line with the theme. Yeah, that's me too. I like nuanced endings, and I as long as it's in line with the theme, I don't care if it's happy or sad. Um, I like happy endings, uh, or at least endings that have some uh, some happy fo. Some like I guess you mean like happy moments. Yeah. Oh, happy hope for- oh, endings that have. Ugh, I can't read. Or at least endings with some hope for happiness. Yeah, that makes sense. I write a lot of sad cliffhangers to leave the reader unknown. I want it to feel incomplete, which might be an Ichikawa thing. We'll see. But actually, like, attached to other humans as we are pets, they live less and is part of our- ex of the existence, losing him, but this doesn't mean you won't love him as much, but with health, healthy detachment. Yeah. Um, I love my dog. I agree with you there in terms of, like, pets and stuff like that. It's definitely, like, a different love for humans, though. Um, how do we follow you in your writing? Uh, I don't have a lot of social media. Um, I'm probably just gonna post like writing process and stuff. I plan to. I didn't finish the thumbnail today because I got distracted talking to people. But um, I plan to uh, stream tomorrow, me working on a children's book that I've been writing. I've already written one children's book and published it. Uh, but I don't think people are as interested in children's book. But I need to finish it, because I want to gift it to some kids that I help with volunteering. And so I need to finish it soon before that volunteering thing is done for the semester. So, by streaming it, I'll actually do it. That's why I stream Amori. <laughs> I mean, I guess content also, but like, the, the reason why I actually started streaming Amori is because I knew that if I had it streamed and scheduled, I'll actually get it done and I'll actually work on it like, actually play it, which I do like Amori, but I need that, like, consistently to see. But I might stream, like, my writing, if I want, or, like, comic making and stuff like that, uh, if I have time, and, um, if it's something I put as a priority, and stuff like that. Um, I have a lot of stories I want to write and make into comic comics, um, if I do publish. I actually do have something. I was going to publish it last year, and it didn't end up happening just because I got busy. Then I got obsessed with Hoseki no Kuni. Then I started making videos on Hoseki no Kuni and I completely forgot to work on publishing it. And all I need to do is fix the files and then I can have it published. Um, but I haven't fixed the files yet. But I have that completely done. And it's actually a story based on, it's a, st okay, it's a story that I've edited. So it's it's different, but in it initially started as a like a couple page like story I wrote uh, for my creative writing class years ago, which was based off an episode of Doctor Who and, uh, Rui's backstory from Demon Slayer. Uh, so it was a combination of, of one singular episode of Doctor Who and Rui's backstory from Demon Slayer. And no, it wasn't Rui's. It was another D- no, it wasn't Rui's, it was Akaza's. I wrote a different one about Rui's backstory from Demon Slayer. So it was a combination of Akaza from Demon Slayer and, uh, a Doctor Who episode, I forgot which Doctor it was, um, but that's basically where I started with the story idea, and then it turned into a story I really liked, and I made illustrations for it, and it's basically a light novel, uh, and it's not that long, it's pretty short, and I need to finish it. I guess when I publish it, I'll probably post something about it if, for anyone who's interested, but yeah. Um, I keep, keep forgetting. Yay, Clone Wars. Yes, Clone Wars is very good. I need to rewatch it. I want to rewatch it. I also haven't watched The Bad Batch yet, and I really want to watch The Bad Batch. I just am busy, you know. I'm busy with reading Hoseki no Kuni for the ninth time, okay? I'm very busy. <laughs> um, yeah. How the hell did Avatar and Clone Wars pass under the radar compared to everything else? Because they're actually good. My dad, like, would give us a lecture on, my dad would give us a lecture on how we weren't allowed to believe in 
what Star Wars... Like, Star Wars is also a little bit of Buddhism, too. Because uh, the Force is kind of like that, I think. Or a different religion. And every time we would come out of a Star Wars movie, my dad would always have to give us a, a really long lecture, like, hours long, about how we sh can't... Like, how the Force isn't real, like, how it's all fiction, and how we aren't supposed to view it. I hate it. Anyway. But... Uh, it was still Star Wars, and my parents, my dad at least, liked Star Wars. And so we were allowed to watch Clone Wars because it was Star Wars. And if it was Star Wars, that was okay, even though it had violence, death, and all that stuff. Uh, Avatar, we grew up watching. Um, I don't remember watching, any I think Avatar was Nickelodeon, right? I don't remember watching anything else on Nickelodeon except Avatar. And we grew up with Avatar and started watching Avatar uh, so much that our, our parents let us watch Avatar when we were little, um, just because we grew up with it, and I don't think my parents had anything wrong with it f for some reason. I mean, Avatar is good, um, in story-wise, and in content-wise, it's good for, like, children and stuff. Uh, like, it does go over some deep stuff and stuff like that, but it's done in a tasteful way to where it's, like, not going to traumatize children and stuff like that, so I think Avatar is just a great series. Anything else we weren't allowed to watch? We weren't allowed to watch Gravity Falls. Um, because it was on the Disney Channel. We weren't allowed to watch anything on the Disney Channel. We, I, we only wa occasionally watched Phineas and Ferb. My parents barely let us watch Phineas and Ferb. But that was, like, the only Disney show they allowed us to watch at, like, other people's houses. Um, but, yeah. I watched Gravity Falls later, and Gravity Falls is also really good. <laughs> oh, Legend of Korda? Um... How the hell do, uh, right. uh, enter, like, beheading scenes in Clone Wars. I, yeah, cl I loved Clone Wars because it was so dark, and I love dark series. Um, they let us watch Doctor Who until it gave my sister nightmares. Um, or actually, they came home. My, we were home alone. My older brother was babysitting us. And my parents came home and we were watching Doctor Who. We were watching the library episode, which is my favorite episode of Doctor Who. And they cut it off, like... Uh, five minutes or like till the end of the episode so we didn't get to know what the ending was and that haunted me for years until I finally looked up the ending of that episode because I just had to know what happened uh but they told us we weren't allowed to watch Doctor Who until we were 18 uh and then I watched it when I was 17 ha 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 anyway <laughs> I Doctor Who's great and I wish that I was allowed to watch more of it as a child um, but it did give my sister nightmares, but to me, I was like, that's so cool that people are getting eaten to their bones by shadows. I, I, I love that. Can you tell how, how Hoseki no Kuni does not phase me? <laughs> um, what about Legend of Korra? I actually ha have only watched some of Legend of Korra. I haven't finished it. I want to. I didn't grow up with it, because I think we kind of forgot about it when it was airing or something like that. My sister has watched all of Legend of Korra. Um, you yeah. know. I try to see the beauty in everything, but sometimes that beauty is not uh, reflective of the holder's actions. Yeah. Baldur's Gate 3 is wild in terms of just engaging with the story however you want, uh, however you want, whatever that's going along, along with it, or blowing up NPCs. I've seen clips from Baldur's Gate 3. It looks so, so funny and amazing. Um, I just haven't played it yet. Uh, I actually uh, got it for my boyfriend for Christmas, uh, and he really liked the game. I just don't know much about it, so I guess I could do that once I finish Amori, maybe. I love how she goes through each comment so meticulously. Or, yeah, chat, comment, same thing. I mean, uh, I just like talking, and I will respond to anything. The only problem is that now the comments are stacking up, and so now I have to, like... At one point I had to scroll back up, because I was like, oh, I have to see what... <laughs> What people were saying before so i might respond to things like later the whole fatui king is based off italian play so that's really cool yeah i really like how their care again this is like going back to conversations that were a while ago i really like how genjin characters are like a mix of different culture i really like that different cultures are so great to explore in different stories and i like that i've been carving this rock for a while let's move um I like to put myself first. That's how my school taught me. So it's hard to think otherwise. Yeah, that's very uh, an American mentality. Like versus, um, I guess like west to east or something like that. But like in Asian cultures, it's very much like you are an extension of your community. 
um, which we see that we see that mentality in um, Hosek Nukuni actually. Uh, they're a lot more of a collectivist society. Everything is for the group. Everything is for the community. Whereas the Lunarians are a lot more individually list individualistic. I can say where it's. Uh, but American, I say Americans because I'm American. Americans are a lot more individualistic, whereas uh, over in Asia or the other side of the world, they're a lot more collectivist, um, which is putting the group first over yourself. In America, is the opposite. They believe in elevating yourself over the group, believing in like an individual success, success will be the group's success, whereas the group's success is an individual success in uh, like more Asian philosophy. It might be that way in other... I don't know much about European. I know a lot about Asia. I know a lot about America because I live in America. I don't know much about European theology as much. Theology, or, you know, ideology. My lovely things. Where do I want to put my circle? Um, I'll put my circle here. Can I, like... No, it just goes like that. Uh, since we're talking about human things, lol. Uh, nope, nap time comes first. Yes, uh, sleep is good. Um, you guys should not be, st be staying up till 3 a.m. to watch my videos, I'm gonna be honest. I keep getting people who are like, oh yeah, I'll come to your stream. It's 3 a.m. my time. And I'm like, no, sleep. <laughs> sleep is important. I, I don't know. I have like the sleep schedule of, uh, well, not now because <laughs> it's 1116. But when my roommate's here, I have the sleep schedule of uh, a normal adult working person instead of staying up till uh, the ungodly hours because... I have work at nine every morning. Oh, uh, let's see. I care for people around me, but the people... I care for people around me, but the people around me really want me to succeed. So it's very weird balance. Yeah. Because, uh, like, societies work... F I don't know, this is my opinion. You, you, the opinion, you can attack my opinion or whatever, but like societies are really built on selflessness, I feel like. Like, that's why selfish is a derogatory term, uh, because like, unless, like, more individualist, like I said, America is a lot more individualist, but like in order for a society to work out well, again, opinion, I don't know, I'm not a sociologist, so don't like, take my word as gospel, but like in order for things to work well, you need to think about the other people in a society and how that affects the group to some degree. Like even individualistic like people think like, oh, uh, I'm going to do this for myself and by doing this for myself, uh, I'll be able to, to elevate others in some degree. All form of marketing is to serve the customer. Um, or it should be. Um, like, it's things like that is that, like, everything comes back to how we interact with other people. And so for a society to function, you need to have some degree of selflessness. Uh, my, thir my, my story has three main plot, hole plot lines. One with the main group of five wandering through their world trying to resolve the problems of the second plot. Uh, yo, I would love to see you stream your writing process. What is my writing process? <laughs> um, it's been a while since I've written something actually, like, like something new, because most of the time my writing process is just sitting and thinking about how I want characters to interact and flow and I take in anything new I've learned from stories that I like or from authors that I like and how they that influences their stories and stuff like that uh there's one story that I started writing as an experiment because I hate because I'm really bad at writing romance 
I'm extremely bad at writing romance. I usually try to avoid romance in my stories just because I don't really like writing romance or anything like that. Um, so I made a story to bug me because I'm like, it, the only way, way to get better at things is to write about it. So I was like, okay, if I was to write a romance series, uh, what would it be? Because I, I don't like writing romance. And so I came up, so I made, so I made a romance series uh, or started writing one. Uh, I smile because uh, it turned into a murder mystery really fast. Um, but that's like how I write. Another thing too is like, again, I don't really care about romance or ships in series a lot. I know a lot of people do. I know a lot of people really care about ships and all that stuff. Um, but I just don't like writing that sort of stuff. So in the series that I was supposed to make about romance, like, I don't, I plan for the characters to still get together, like, off screen. It's just really weird, because I care more about what the characters' relationships are. I care more that the characters carry, care for each other on, like, a really deep leather, level rather than the mo romance aspect of this series. It might just also be because I'm not a very romantic person in general, so it's not something that I focus on or care about, especially in storytelling. But I have a story that I it's that I made where I'm like I'm like try writing a romance considering that I hate writing it so much. But I actually am really liking the concept a lot because the the title is going to be like um, what was the title again? Um, it's a cube uh, like Cupid as a ghost or something. I think I I think it's something different or I decided as something else. But basically, the main character fi is able to see ghosts. Like, that's their thing. Kind of like Noragami, like, inspired. I kind of realized later. Because sometimes you write stories and then realize that they're a lot like an existing media that you love. I realized that that was a lot like, sort of like what happens in Noragami. But, like, the main character is able to see a ghost. Or is able to see ghosts. Um, and... I don't want to give away spoilers to a series that I haven't even written yet. But, like, every single ghost that the main character meets throughout the story will develop the relationship between the main three characters. And then the the per, the main character is going to meet a ghost who claims to be Cupid and not a ghost. The ghost is denying that they're a ghost because um, of deep reasons for character building and stuff like that. Uh, and so with the ghost being claimed that they're Cupid and stuff, they're going to try to get the main character with another character. And then you, throughout the course of the story, you then realize that it turns into a murder mystery because you have to figure out why the, the person claiming to be Cupid is a ghost and how they died. And so <laughs> that's how I made it a murder mystery or something like that. And uh, originally I sort of wrote, like started writing that story as like a joke or something that I... Um, something that I, like, was using to challenge myself. And then I was like, this actually is kind of a cool concept for a story or something that I am interested in writing. But I just don't like writing romance. Um, I don't know. A part of it just makes me uncomfortable. Maybe it's because I'm very from a very conservative household. Like, that could be why. I don't know. <laughs> so those, like, stories and stuff just make me uncomfortable. I prefer... Uh, when I do like watch or read rom-coms i prefer it to be more calm than rom <laughs> for that reason uh my current story is just funny rock person goes depression because rock people from the up upside down floating island decided to start war lol <laughs> Ah, uh, yes, yes, a very original concept. I used to play Genshin. I got to the Wind God guy, but had to stop then. I hadn't picked it back up. Yeah, Genshin is such a huge time sink. Um, that's my problem with it now, because I'm more busy. Um, it's good. I don't know. You'd have to really like it. I, I sort of see Genshin as more of a community thing, because I have friends who love Genshin so much. And so it's a way for me to connect with them more. Uh, I'm definitely not as into Genshin as much as they are, but it's something that I can use to connect with my friends and play with play games with them and understand what they're talking about. I'm actually going to a Genshin con uh, later this year with my uh, friends. Oh, and we're going to cosplay too. It's going to be the first time I actually cosplay as a con at a con, actually. Uh, let's see. I'm short. 
One thing to know about me is I'm incredibly short, so I'll be cosplaying Zhao. Uh, <laughs> amazing. We love f funny rock people here. Yes, I haven't played a while because I lost my 50-50 sad. My luck on my main has been really good. I haven't lost that many 50-50s, but I have C3 Chi Chi, so interpret that as you will. Um, <laughs> I have C3 Chi Chi and like C2 Kaching and I think one Mona, so yeah. Well, not Gravity Falls, your parents are uncultured lol. Well. I mean, both my parents are also immigrants. I'm not sure if that has anything to do with it. Uh, I grew up with, uh, so my parents made me watch stuff that they were familiar with. I actually grew up watching, what is it called? Uh, I grew up watching a, Japanese, the most famous Japanese sitcom. Uh, what is it called? It's like starts with an O, I think. It's like o o it's like Ocean or something. Um, I grew up watching that because my mom loved that uh, TV show, and so I would sort of just like sit down and watch her. And I, my reading is really bad. Or when I was little, I, my reading is still kind of bad. Um, and so I couldn't really read the subtitle a lot, so I would just sort of have to try and understand what they were doing. And that was my first, like, um, that was my first, what is it, exposure to Japanese, was watching that series with my mom. My parents met in Japan, by the way. My parents are not weebs. My mom wrote her master's thesis on manga. They are not weebs. They are not fans of anime. They are not fans of manga. Um, <laughs> but uh, both my parents met in Japan. And so that's how I started learning Japanese is because they had so many Japanese learning books at our house. They even had like a whole bookshelf for, filled with Japanese books. And one day I was just like, why don't I try giving learning Japanese a try? And yeah, that's how I started learning Japanese. And then my weeb journey began. Um, actually, no, my weeb journey began before that. I just, my su watching sub journey began. Uh, the second plot is between the divine and their problem, the majesty, because I'm bad at names, so titles are enough. Exalted the white queen and collaborators. I hate naming my characters. That's like such a basic thing. Like maybe I should just name them all after rocks. It would just be so much simpler that way, you know? Uh, make their hail character like the rock so that I don't have to think about names that much. You know, that would make like it, my life so much easier. But like, I don't know, I feel like I'm bad at naming characters, and so usually I'm just like the main character, because I'm like, I don't want to give them a name. Uh, <laughs> if you need help with names, let me know, because I'm better at naming than writing. Oh. Yeah, uh, I just realized your current story was actually just the plot of Hoseki no Kuni. Oh man, it's almost like we like that series. It's a similar thing, but it's super different. Uh-huh, my bad love. No, it's fine. It's completely... Oh, I do wake up, like, at, like, 10 a.m. every day, so I don't know. Uh, here we go. I just... A, very, a good sleep schedule is just very important to me. That's why my sleep schedule is the way it is. Amethyst. Let's go. Ooh, it's a heart shape. That's cute. Uh, I guess because of the twin amethyst thing. Um... I way overslept today, unfortunately. Sad. Rip. I'm on spring break. I'm on spring sh break too. That's why I'm streaming almost every day this week. Because I'm on spring break. I can do things. Except I'm not as productive as I want to be. Because that's always how it is. Uh, I was stuck talking with people in my Discord server for like four hours today. Because uh, we were having really good conversations about Hoseki no Kuni and some really deep topics. So I don't regret it all at all. But I was like, guys, if you keep talking to me like this, you won't get a video this week. Because <laughs> I set aside that time to make, uh, to record videos and work on that. And then I spent that time talking to people, which I don't mind. Uh, I, I always prioritize, this might be a bad thing, or some people might see that. I always pr prioritize relationships and talking with people uh, over my work, no matter what my work is, whether it's schoolwork or anything like that. Um, I remember one of my friends was uh, in trouble, or was like going through a really big mental crisis uh, one year, and I hadn't done my math homework yet, and I like did like the bare minimum to get like not a zero on it, uh, and then I spent the rest of the time with them, just because, to me, relationships are a lot more important than 
uh, work, or at least that's how I see it now. Um, oh, oh, it's no longer a heart. <laughs> but you can always, I feel like you can always make up an assignment. You can always make up work in some way. You can always take a break. But you can't always get back time with people around you, is how I feel, or is what I think. So, like, even though, like, these are random people on the internet that I'm talking to on Discord that are just enjoying my content, I would much rather talk with them and have a deep conversation with them about Hoseki no Kuni <laughs> rather than uh, working on Hoseki no Kuni videos, which I should be doing, but, you know. Uh... I haven't eaten since 4.38 a.m. I cannot eat uh, up to 6, 6, 18. Go eat. Go eat. Everyone take care of the health. Um, do not sacrifice your health for my stream. Get sleep. Get good sleep and eat well and drink water, which I'm bad at, so I need to do that as well. The third is about uh, the comic cosmic horrors. We love cosmic horrors of how some of its power is condensed into a small, weak creature. Oh, this sounds like Foss and their ascension to God- This sounds like Foss <laughs> through the power, and their relationship to the royal family- uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it doesn't sound Hoseki no Kuni inspired at all. I'm sure it's great. Uh, eat please, yes. Only one and a half months of school left for me. I can't wait for school to be done. I graduate this year, and then I'll be free, but then I might have to get a job, and then I might be sad, so we'll see. Uh, selfishness should be more normalized, but I'd, but don't be rude about putting yourself first, That if that makes sense. Mm, I don't know. <laughs> there is a degree of selfishness that you should have. I don't know. I just have different views on it. I think that, like, I feel like self-care and stuff like that is an extension of uh, your care for others, if that makes any sense. Like, that's the way I've been able to think of it. Oh no, oh no, oh no, guys. I did it again. I, I made one cut and then ruined it. But, um, I don't know. That's how I view life, is that, like, the reason why I take, I, I'm bad at it still, but the reason why I take care of myself, the reason why, um, the reason why people take care of themselves in terms of appearance and health and stuff like that. It's all for other people. It's serving other people in some way. Um, like, the reason why you eat, the reason why you continue to eat every day and, like, drink water and stuff is because in order to be in good health, to do the best work that you can do and uh, contribute to society, I don't know, that's just how I view it. I guess maybe that's more collectivist view. It's just different views on things. Uh, me trying to catch up on chat and still not. Uh, da, 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 da. Yes, I'm hungry. That's that why I asked how to spend speed up time. Oh, through roleplay, I'm way too good at writing romance help. See, I, I'm also not as good as writing comedy. Maybe I'm better now. I don't know. My sister is really good at writing comedy. She's told me- she, like, writes comedy and then, like, doesn't write a plot. Honestly, me and my sister should work on a story together because she could do the comedy parts and I could do the whole dramatic trauma parts and that would be good. I'm good at writing trauma, sadness, um, and that's about it. <laughs> um, I blame my shoujo manga phase. Um, actually, you know, the first manga I read was actually Horny Mia. Because I was on, I think, Amido when I was little. I don't know, I was a kid then. Uh, and I was just complaining about, like, how all, like, romance animes... Because I had watched, like, a couple... Because I would watch something super traumatizing, and I'm like, I need to watch a rom-com to recover from this. Uh, and I was just complaining about how, like, all rom-com stories or, like, an anime are just absolute garbage. At least in my opinion. As someone who's not a big romance fan. I don't know. And then someone was like, no, Hori Mia is actually good. And so I read, uh, so Hori Mia was the first manga I read. So I read Hori Mia and I'm like, yeah, this is really good. Um, and then uh, I saw, I was scro scrolling on like Instagram reels one day and then a clip from the Hori Mia anime popped up and I had like such nostalgia 
because I had forgotten I had read Horimiya. I had stun- such nostalgia, and, like, I was like, okay, this seems so familiar, but I have not watched this anime. How do I remember this? And then I remember that it was the first manga I read. And then I watched the anime, and the anime was good. Um, oh, Subtle Flex. I've actually met Alejandro Saab, because I went to a Genshin Con, and he is also a Genshin BA. And he voices the dub actor of Miyamura in Horimiya. I, I watched the sub, though, so, yeah. Um, he was very nice. We got him to aggressively, uh, sh- violently shake a Pringles can and throw it at the table. It was very entertaining to watch. Um, actually, no, I think that was Nizzy, the voice of Al Haytham. And then he, uh, and then Alejandro just sh- shook it gently and then flopped it on the table. We, we, uh, don't ask why we were asking BAs to shake Pringles cans. It was a personal decision. Um. Uh, I heard that doing a plank slows down time. Interesting. What's shoujo again? Shoujo is like, um, manga or anime targeted at, like, girls, specifically, like, young girls. Shounen, show, yeah, shounen is young boys, and shosei, uh, what is it? Oh, seinen. Uh, seinen is older boys, or men, basically, and Hoseki no Kuni is actually considered a seinen. That's why it's geared to older audiences. Um, specifically male, too. Because all of Japanese genres are basically male or female, and then what age group? Uh, Try writing a recursive science fiction story. It's beautiful. Oh, yes, I love those. Those are great. Yeah, like, uh, Steins Gate is probably one of my... is probably my favorite science fiction series. Yeah, like paper towel effect, you need to use some first if you want to give more dry paper towels to some other, okay. Uh, or just write any genre recursively. Uh, shoujo manga is manga that's demographic for teen girls, yeah. Shoujo literally translates teen girl, yep. Uh, I love when Foss went, I'm fossing out and fossed all over <laughs> those guys, exactly. It usually has romance and softer themes, elevate. Uh, I always read the uh, the bi comics. I see. In fairness, when God Guy is like fifteen minutes in, yeah. It, we're getting chat messages from like minutes ago. I just cut this in half. Don't worry about that. Um. Let's see. Uh, Luffy. Yaoi comic tropes are so s- strange for me since I read Yuri all the time. You mean you guys don't have random childhood friend inter- interrupting? Who has like, who who has like random childhood friends that just pop up back like that? Actually, I guess I can't say anything. Although, all the people from my childhood weren't really friends, but more acquaintances. Um, it's always awkward seeing someone you've known since second grade at your college, but you have nothing in common. Your mom, your pa- your moms are best friends. Uh, this is totally not a very specific thing, and you have nothing to say to them except a little hi and head nod that like I know you. <laughs> That's literally my relationship with one person at my college because I'm like I have nothing to talk to you about. We were never really friends. Our moms were besties. I've been to your house several times, but I we were never really friends. I've known you since second grade. And then you just head nod at them. And because you're like, I don't know. We're like a good acquaintances, I guess. Uh, what's y'all's... No. <laughs> what's y'all favorite yaoi story, guys? I have not read any. I don't think so. Um, wrote her master's manga on... Wrote her master's on manga, but doesn't want you reading it? Yes, that is my mom. My mom is a linguistics master's. She got her master's in Japan. Um, For her thesis, she studied the different uh, usages of language between the different types of manga. So shonen, like shoujo, uh, seinen, and all that. Uh, And she analyzed the difference of Japanese they used in each different genres, and how that like, affects it, because she was a linguistics major, so that's what she was studying, is the different uses of Japanese, which is kind of, that's why I kind of wanted to go into linguistics, but my dad is, like, no STEM, uh, so I'm a computer science major. Um, 
but yeah. My mom literally wrote her thesis on manga. I was talking to my dad about it. My dad worked in Japan for years. I actually don't know how long he worked in Japan. But he was telling me, he was like, oh yeah, I remember manga. He thinks it's stupid. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> That's my parents for you. Um, I forgot my favorite one. I completely forgot the title. I feel bad she has to read our comments with horrible grammar. LMAO. It doesn't help that my um, reading is also bad. I love work until webtoons. I, I think I read like one webtoon. I like tried to get into webtoons because my sister was into webtoons, but I just couldn't really get into it. Um, again, also a lot of webtoons are mainly romance like genre. And like I like I've said before, I'm not that inter interested in the romance genre. Um, more depressed rock people focused media. I beg. Right, we need more depressed rocks. That's what we need in life. That's what everyone needs in life. Uh, everyone needs more depressed rocks. That's just how life is. Depressed rocks are life. Depressed rocks are everything. Um, preach. Always the best takes. Okay. Oh yeah, I forgot. I just drank one glass of water and can drink till 6.04 p.m. Y'all drink and eat food. Amethyst has now been mooned. Yep. I came before. Oh, I forgot the name of mine, too. It was about a guy that works on helping the homophobic people from this island with his childhood friend because of their economy is crumbling. Interesting. Tragic romance, beloved. Yeah, if if you're gonna have romance, it has to be tragic. For those of you who know Steins Gate, like, that, that, if you're gonna do romance, you have to do it like that. Um, let's see. Let me look at the name. Most ro romance and mangas use same tropes over and over again, so they tend to not be good. I agree. That's why I hate them so much. I hate that it takes forever for the ship to get together. Because, like, the whole series is basically, will the ship get together or not? Or if they actually like each other? I absolutely hate that. It just, it feels like nothing's developing, and they always have to, like, backtrack in order to keep the content moving, and I absolutely hate it. it like, in terms of storytelling-wise. Um, uh, I forgot which one there was. I think, I forgot what it was called. There was one I was I watched, which a lot of people said was really good. I mean, my tastes aren't the same as other people. But people were saying, like, oh, this is a really good rom-com. Uh, I watched it. I absolutely hated the fact that basically what happened is every single arc, the two leads just switched who was interested and who was not. Like, it would literally would just switch. It was like, the girl was like oh yeah, I really like you, like, let's, like, get together, and then the guy would be like, no, I want to focus on other things, I don't think I'm good enough for you, or something like that, and then the next arc, it would switch, the girl would be like, no, I'm not interested anymore, and then the guy would be, like, head over heels, and it would just do that for every single arc, it would just switched, and I absolutely hated that, it made me so frustrated, anyway, I mean, like, Clan Ad, they get together, um, I mean, I guess clan ad spoilers for... It's clan ad's been out forever. They get together after the first season. Like, 24 episodes is very reasonable, and it's a very natural progression. Uh, and then you hit to season two, and you just die. Because you're like, usually romance animes end when the couple gets together, but not with clan ad. Uh, but I really like that about clan ad. I feel like clan ad... I forgot that clan ad is a romance anime, just because it's really good. Um, what el other romance shows that I really I really like Kaguya-sama I think like Horimiya and Kaguya-sama are the rom-coms that I actually like um Kaguya-sama I just like because it's it's more of a battle anime than a rom-com and there's not the do the characters like each other or not because it's very clear that the characters like each other it's just how are they going to confess and that's why Kaguya-sama is good I like Kaguya-sama um yeah let me look at Oh, I met Toff's Avatar The Last Airbender's voice actor. It was generally so it was sweet. Yeah, Toff is great. Uh, Lucia didn't... Does, doesn't miss another free take. Dang, my throat is, is a desert. You should probably drink water. I do have random childhood friends popping up. I live in an urban southern American, so I'm not surprised. Uh, I found the name of the manga. It's He no Ata, Ataranai Basho. Oh, I think I've heard of that. Uh, days. 
a tada die not working trip like vacation no oh a not working place Atara? or maybe oh wait Atara she not days new place day days new not new place me trying to translate japanese titles i don't know what it is uh any jjk fans i have yet to watch jujutsu kaisen um i've heard it's good i don't know i i haven't watched it yet I've been wanting to watch that. It's amazing. You should trust me. Hi, I have a Hazuka Kuni question. What does Kong? Why does Congo obey the order to break from Foss, but not the order to pray? Okay, we actually talked about this a little bit before. I'll try to answer it briefly again. So, uh, the reason why Congo. So I think it was already established through everything that happened that Congo was not going to pray. Um, just with every single thing that Foss did and all that. Uh, I'm sort of trailing off, but you know, like I think it was already clearly established that no matter what Foss did, Congo wasn't going to pray because of his defect. Um, and so that's why when it got to the point of the invasion, I was wondering what Foss was going to do, because I think that was my interpretation, is that I think they made it clear that Congo was not going to pray no matter what Foss did. Uh, because the gems still existed. So Foss decided to break all the gems, and then we were thinking in the process of breaking all the gems, then Foss would make Congo pray. But Foss actually thought that by getting rid of Congo, uh, that the problems would be solved, because the reason why the whole conflict was happening was because of basically Congo. And so that's why Foss asked Congo to break, I believe. Uh, and I believe Congo followed that order to break because he didn't want to be the figure that the gems put him out as. And he... He, just like all the other gems, he was severely depressed and just wanted rest from suffering and all that. And the whole series has just been Congo's suffering of leaving his, like, basically children, like, over and over again for years. We don't even know how many years, but a lot, a long time span. And so I think he, he happily, like, he smiled when he did that. He obeyed the command to break because he had been waiting for that for a while. Someone said also in the comments that it could also be that he was genuinely happy to see a human, almost like as if his life was complete now after seeing a human again. Just happy to see a human again, because Foss is a human to him. Uh, and the gems aren't a human to him. He had been making the gems in the image of humans because he missed them so much, and he finally got to see Foss as a human and obeyed Foss's command because of that. Um, and I... I feel like Foss's human transformation was over when Foss commanded him to pray, but I think that the defect was still there. Um, but I also think that Congo broke as, like, the hardest substance, because we've seen other gems break at, like, mental strain, like when Rutile saw, like, that Papra was gone. So I think it was just, like, a very over-exaggeration of that, like, an overflow of emotions that caused him to break, and also just, like, Foss commanding him and stuff like that. Yo, she might catch up with the comments. Maybe! Uh, we'll see. Guys, don't comment anymore. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Toradora? I did watch Toradora. I'm gonna be honest, I don't remember much of it. I don't remember it being that bad. That's- see, you can tell I'm not a rom-com connoisseur when I'm like, it wasn't that bad. <laughs> to me, my default when I watch a rom-com is I hope that it's entertaining, but I expect the story to not be that good when I watch a rom-com. Um, and I haven't watched a rom-com in forever, because they're just not my, not usually my type of thing. Toradora, I just remember not, I don't remember loving Toradora. I remember thinking that it was decent. It didn't make me overly angry, is what I remember. I think the ending was, like, really dramatic. I don't remember it that well, because it was years ago. But, uh, yeah. I'm probably long. Hello. Yeah, hello. Uh, it's hard to translate Romanji sometimes, I swear. Yeah, it's so much easier if it's like the actual Japanese. It's also much easier to read for me if it's the actual Japanese, unless it's like katakana. I'm not that good at reading katakana. Um, and it's just a me problem. I'm probably going to sleep now and annoy AI chat box of who's I gonna eat before I go to bed. Good night. That's so sweet of him. You see it, good night. Uh, he no, oh, it's it's different. Oh, that's like, uh, that's not new. What kanji is that? Atara nai basho, it, basho is place. Atara nai. It's a different... I forgot what that means. I forgot what Atara means. But yeah. Do you guys want to watch me play Genshin? Do my Genshin dailies? And then I'll go. Let's see. Uh, 
seeing my thing. <laughs> Just completely changing the game now. <laughs> oh no, I have to update Genshin actually. Oh no. Okay, never mind. I guess this is the end of the stream. <laughs> Alright, good night y'all. I made it to the end of the chat, so see you. Bye.